All right, here we go. Today we have one of the greatest boxers of all time. The only four-time world heavyweight champion. The only boxer in history to win the undisputed championship in two-way classes in the three-belt era. The only boxer to beat Mike Tyson twice. It is my honor to sit down with Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Vlad TV. Such an honor to finally sit down with you. I've been a longtime fan my whole life. Thank you. Okay, it's your first time here. I want to start in the very, very beginning. So you were actually born in Atmore, Alabama. Yes. Youngest of nine kids. Yes. But when you, when you were actually young, your family moved to Atlanta. Yes. Okay, and what was the name of the housing project you guys grew up in? Well, we grew up in, we didn't move to a project when we, when we first got here. We, we moved with my, my, my sister, uh, what uh, her husband, mom house. Okay, we moved there. Yes. Okay, so you have a different father than the rest of your siblings. Yes. So was there a father in the home growing up? No, no. Okay, so you have a single mom with nine kids. Yes. How did she pull that off? Well, at my well, my two oldest sisters they were old enough. They were old enough to have kids our age because. My oldest sister had two kids my age, mm. like that, and then she had two of them um, like one year behind me and three years behind me. Okay, so the family was kind of taking care of each other in yes, a way. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I mean, during that time, what was the craziest thing that you saw growing up? Well, I, I didn't see much. I didn't see much because we, we you know, with me, my, my mama kept me so snugged up like... <laughs> When nothing to do to I started going to the boys' club. Okay. Before you went to the boys' club, did you get into fist fights at all? No. Not one? No. Okay. Because usually boxers start out fighting in the street, and then they kind of channel their energy into the ring, but not you. No, I ne never got into a fight. Okay. So then, eight years old, you went to the boys' club. They, yeah. I went to the boys' club at the age of six. Aha. Uh -huh. Like that. And, okay. And but at eight, you started actually- I started boxing. Started boxing. Yes. And you had a trainer named Mr. Morgan. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, tell me about how you first started to actually put the gloves on and start boxing at that point. Well, actually, I was playing football and I was on the 65-pound football team. So when I, I come up and I'd seen somebody hitting the speed back, and of course- I realized if I go in there and hit that speed pack, I learned how to do that. I'd be able to tell my friends I can do something they can't do. Mm -hmm. And so, so I went up and asked, asked the man, I said, I said, hey, sir. He said, yeah. I said, I, can I come in and hit the speed back? He said, no. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, because you got to be on the boxing team. I said, I want to be on the boxing team. He said, no. <laughs> so the next day I asked him, he said, no again. And the third day I'd seen him and he, when he looked up to see me, he just started shaking his head. So I act like I was just going to walk away. <laughs> so when he turned it back, I ran up there again. He said, well, well yeah, come on in, come on in. He said, no. He said, no. I'm I'm not gonna let you hit that little bag because that little bag don't do nothing for you. I'm gonna let you hit this big bag. Are you strong? I said yes, sir. He said okay then. You hit it, hit it as hard as you can. So I, I hit this big bag in my hand, and it hurt, but it made him laugh. And when he started laughing, I just kept hitting it. Da, da, da. He said, wait a minute. You, 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 you knocked the skin off your hand and stuff. I, I said, it's okay. Then he, then he tells me, he said, man, he said, you're good. And I said, yes, sir. He said, do you know you can be like Muhammad Ali? Mm. I said, I'm only eight years old. He said, you ain't always be eight. And I believed him because I know next week I was going to be nine. And so... And that's how everything started. Right. You went home, told your mom you want to be a boxer. She said, okay. You came back, and now you start training with this guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you were winning all your fights. They called you One Punch Holyfield. Yes. 
go in, knock the guy out, <laughs> and you're done. Well, it wasn't so much knocking the guy out. I hit him so hard, and they were crying, ah, like this, and they stopped the fight. Mm. And so, they did, you know, it's not a knockout, but you, so everybody realized, hey, oh, man, he really strong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they used to call me one, one punch Holyfield. So you're starting to, to actually compete. And uh, you actually won the, the Boys Club Boxing Tournament at one point. Well, yeah, the first fight, I won that. Aha. <laughs> Got that first trophy. Got that that trophy, first trophy is what, what kind of changed everything for me because in, in, in my house, I was the youngest one, and all I had to do, I had to do everything everybody told me. But once they put that trophy on there, then everybody who came over the house, they said, Miss Holyfield, who is the fighter? She said, that little one. <laughs> and they said, well, he look. My mama said, he sure enough can fight. And that let me know that she liked trophies. Mm -hmm. And once I found that out, I had something, I had to go to get him. Right. And your mom would, would whoop you and the other kids at yes. home. Do mm -hmm. you think that kind of determined, you know, kind of set some, you know, things in motion in your life of, you know, violence later on and so forth or, or not really? Well, my, my mama, my mama, my mama was very hard on us because mm -hmm. she wanted us to be better than she was. My mother my mother felt that her mom let her do what she wanted to do. And so my mama said, I got a lot of bad habits, but I don't want you to pick them up. I want you to be better. Mm. And and that's what my mama explained to her. And, you know, but but when she explained it to her, she knocking the day like something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So by age 12, you've been winning all your fights. And you had to do a match with this white kid named uh, Cecil Collin. Yes. And him being white, you figure that he was soft and you're just going to whoop him like everyone else. Yes. But that didn't happen. And then, and then I, was I remember Mr. Martin say, you know, he asked me, are you afraid to fight this kid? And, I, and, you know, but every other white kid, I hit him. When I hit him one time, they said, oh, God. And, and they stopped to fight. Now, so, you know, I'm thinking that this kid here probably going to do the same thing. But I did notice the difference. Now, this kid here, with the other kids, they mama and father were with them. And they were always smiling. They had the hair cone to the right side and like that and grinning. And like, but when I fought this kid, this kid, mom and dad wasn't with him. This kid didn't fight, didn't fight in boxing shoes just like I ain't fighting boxing shoes. Hmm. And so the other kids used to have a nice robe on. This kid didn't have a robe on. And his mom and dad went with him. And so that was the only difference. But but the mother kids were white too, just like he was, but but it was a little different. When we fought, it, oh man, it was a tough fight though, from the start to the end. Yeah, and he won. Yep, and he got the decision. Yep, you cried afterwards. I sure did. Right, and you came home, and uh, your mom says she didn't raise a quitter. Get back in there. Yep, and and he beat me again. Right. <laughs> so, eventually, I turned thirteen, mm -hmm. and 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 I was actually in the way in. I was looking for see what weight he was going to be in. Cause whatever weight he was in, I wasn't gonna be in it. <laughs> Are you ducking him, basically? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely didn't do it, but the fact of the matter, I didn't see him, and and I win when I make it to the final. And my friend them lost. Then they said, "You gonna lose too?" I said, "No, I'm not." They said, "He said, you know that guy's he." So I said, "He ain't show up." Then, then what is his name doing right here? I seen his name. Till just fell. Follow my eye. <laughs> now, I know I got to fight him because I know my mama going to give me a whooping because I didn't even try. Right. And But I went on in there, and that was my first time praying. And I won. Okay. And, and so from that point on, I realized life is about not quitting. Mm -hmm. 
That was that the Junior Olympics? The Junior Olympics, yeah, thirteen. Ah, so you won that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got an even bigger trophy for that now. Yep. Okay, and then by fifteen, you became the uh, Southeastern Regional Champion. Yes. Uh, and you got the Best Boxer Award. So you're really starting to really take this seriously and win over and over again. But you weren't big in the beginning. You were a, a late bloomer. Yes, late bloomer. And you thin, and, and I used to get mad when people called me skinny. Yeah. Because in a point of calling you skinny back then, they were saying you poor. You ain't got nothing to eat. <laughs> and they'd laugh at you all the time. And I you know, which was kind of sad, and like this, but today I just think about it, wow. Only thing that you wanted to do would be fat, cause what you want to, cause you want to tell people you eat every day. Yeah. It's, it's something about eating every day, kind of makes you feel like you are better than somebody. Mm. Right, because by the time you graduated high school, you're only five foot eight and 147 pounds. Right. How big were you? Cause you're six, six two and a half. Six two and a half. Yeah. Right. And how much did you weigh at, you, at the most? I, I, one one seventy eight. Okay, got it. Okay, and then by 1982, age 20, you actually met Mike Tyson. Sure. And you guys sparred together during this time? No, no. We didn't spar until 84. Oh, okay. Yeah, 84. Got it. And what was it like to spar Mike Tyson back then? Well, the thing is, is that Mike used to knock everybody out. So, you know, it was kind of like, didn't nobody... Now, but he had his own sparring partner that he knock out every day. He had people come in there and he knock them out, and um, and so so Mike and I we both on the losing squad. So we on the losing squad and stuff like that. So this is the reason why I realized all the things that he could do because he did it so well. Mm. He was an expert in rope, expert and hitting the bag. Everything that he did, he did great. Yeah. And I, you know, I sit there and I was kind of watch and I said, wow, man, he's good. But, but in the game of boxing, it's about what you can do to a person to, to, to get them to move, to capitalize on which way they're going to move. But Mike was, Mike was all one of the fighters who charge at you all the time. Yeah, and and so and what I had that a lot of people didn't have I had good, good, good rhythm and good movement. So I can I can pop back and, and and make you run into my shots. I was able. I had I had fast hands and and like this and and but and what I had too. I I had this thing where that I wasn't afraid of nobody. Mm. Yeah, because my mom was the only way you're gonna lose. When you don't take no chance to win, mm. and so you know, so she, uh, you know, by me being the youngest at nine, she, you know, I don't cry a lot of time because she had to tell me this all the time. What are you gonna get get scared of something you don't even try? So if you don't try, then you're not gonna win. You ain't gonna get it if you don't try. You got to put something in it, and you know. So so my mama stopped me for crying at a younger age and say, "You got to stop all these tears. These tears don't help you." Mm. Everybody cry, but you don't have to cry in front of nobody. And so, so I, these things that these things that my mom has said is the, is the reason why I truly became who I am. Because what she was saying, you 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 you, you even though you feel nervous, you got to go in there like you're not. Well, in '83, you actually represented the U.S. in the Pan American Games yes. in Venezuela. You won the silver. Yes. Uh, you lost to uh, Pablo Romero, who was right. the, the Cuban world champion at, yep. at the time. It was a big medal. So you, your trophies and medals are getting bigger and bigger. And then the next year in 84, you won the national golden gloves. Yes. You had a record of 160 wins, 14 losses, 76 by knockout. Yep. So man, 160 fights. You were fighting your ass off. Yeah. <laughs> And then that led to you going to the Summer Games. Yes. How did it feel as an American to go to the Olympics to represent America? I mean, the Pan American Games are prestigious, but the Olympics are the Olympics. Yes. The thing is, think about it. everybody that you with, 
everybody is special. Call it everybody an expert at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, with me, this is my first time ever being around that everybody is good. It's just you got to know what it is that they're good at. Because, you know, you get to, you know, you get people just look regular. But they was the best. And I just and I said, what? Well, and I started thinking to myself, these people looking at me, they don't know I'm the best too. <laughs> you know, even though you may be taller, you may be bigger, that don't mean that you can whoop me, man. <laughs> but, it, it, it just, but I also know it's something they can do better than me. So you know, it was, it was amazing that you just to to look at the person and just start saying, "I wonder what that person do." But you're afraid to ask. I was afraid to ask them, "What do you do?" Like just because you you realize that person great too. Mm-hmm. Everybody in here is great, and it, and and so it, it was amazing to me to to realize that. That's just like going outside and you see the people. And but you don't know something they great in. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and that was the biggest thing that made the Olympic Games so attractive to me to realize that all oh, the great people is here. And I was <laughs> that, you know, you, you just need to be quiet and find out find out what they can do. Like this, but it it it, it was it was uh exciting thing. Well, you won the bronze yes. and you, you got kind of robbed, people say, uh, against uh, Kevin Barry. It was a little heartbreaking because your idol is Muhammad Ali and he has a gold medal in the Olympics. Were you hoping to bring back the gold as well, obviously? Well, yeah, you know, the whole big thing, it, I wasn't going for the gold when there would be no reason to fight. Exactly. I'm talking about the, 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 the point? honor of the, to be the very best you could be, mm-hmm. and, and the fact that, in fact that, it was just a bad call on they be on their behalf, and it stopped me from moving up. You know, I, I was just a little disappointed because now because everybody said, "Man, you ain't gonna go off." I said, "My mama's with there." <laughs> I said, "I didn't want my mama to climb up in the ring and hit me with that shoe." <laughs> I said. I, my mama would have did that. She would have climbed in the ring and hit you. Oh, yeah, because my mom, my mama told me, she said, don't act like nothing ain't ever happened to you. Yeah. She said, she said, things happen to everybody at any given time. She said, you just can't just start crying and all this. She said, you're not a kid yeah. anymore. And you're representing the country. Yeah, well, yeah, then you represent the country as well, you know, but you know, just for me to know that my mama would actually would have clammed up on the ring and and, 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 and what got me right then and there. Well, uh, I interviewed A.J. Johnson. And uh, you guys started dating after you won the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And she said it was going great until you had a kid. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if he's ever heard me say this. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I, I think we were. I think we honestly were two birds of a feather. I think the problem is, number one, that young. Our careers both, you know, elevating. Um, I think two things happened. One, he started having kids, a lot of kids, and that's just not who I am, and that's not the environment that I was raised in with my mother and father. Um, I'm a very monogamous spirit most of the time, and so I just didn't know at that point, I didn't know how to navigate a man who was having babies with five and six different women. And so that Hold on, was little, while y'all were in relationship? Well, no, I'm just saying like at the time. You know, uh, well, one, yes, one happened while we were in a relationship. And then there was two and then three and four. And I was like, oh, so this is just who you are. This is what you do. Got it. I got to go. And, and, you know, we can <laughs> stay friends, right? <laughs> Things happen. What, well, well, you know, it, I'm telling you, it is, it is what it is. You know, when, like my whole thing is that I wasn't that kid. I wasn't that kid that came up with a lot of money mm-hmm. and all that. I came to the people... People would taunt me in in school by you ain't got no can of money, and they'll just lick their candy and, and all that, and and but they end up with these rotten teeth and all that. <laughs> I didn't have no rotten teeth and all that because I ain't have no can of money, okay. right? But 
these are the things how the how the kids how kids did think. And it was just it just and 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 the fact that you know me being being from Atlanta and like this and the art the art the art was with me is to give my very best in everything that I was gonna do to be successful. And so, you know, when I, you know, of course, in meeting her, she, she was high, highly educated. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm just Evander Holyfield who went to the Olympics and everybody liked that. But that, you but and that's, you know, that's how I, that's how I met her and, uh, you know, and start talking and things like that. But, you know. It is what it is. Was that your first baby at that point? Oh, well, 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 yeah, yeah. No, that was my my, my second kid. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah. So, okay, yeah. got it. Okay, and then after that, you started your professional career. Well, oh. my, my, my professional career was 84. So I... I, yeah. I, I met her probably eighty five. I, I had I had came out. The Olympics was over exactly. when I met her, and then you went pro. Yeah, exactly. And you started out as a light heavyweight. Yes. You know, your first fight was with Lionel Byram. Lionel Byron. Byron. Yeah. Madison Square Garden. It's big leagues. Yep. Won in six rounds. Yes. How did it feel to win your first professional match? Well, it it felt good, but it was nerve wracking because the fact of the matter is that everybody, this whole place packed and everybody and after all the people now, we have, it was four other gold medals that fought on the car. Wow. Now, I'm the only bronze medal <laughs> and they have me fighting the Philadelphia state champion and, and he looked like Joe Lewis. Mm. And like this, and I'm like, oh my goodness. How in the world that the four gold medal, they get these guys that not good, and I fight the Philadelphia state champ. Yeah. Like this, and I'm like, you know, it was a hard thing, you know, and I, you know, I didn't say nothing, you know, but, you know, I, I was upset because the fact that the matter, I said, I, I get the tough guy. <laughs> I won, though. Yeah. I was, it's, you know, it went to distance, and I won. And and I was like, but, I, you know, I didn't say nothing, but really I was just saying, you know, I, how do I get the toughest guy? Right. But you still won, so. Well, you know, but, I'm, but if I didn't win, then. then it it could have derailed your career somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah. because, you, you know, because. That's the only reason why ABC couldn't take us off because they had a, a clause that they can only take you off if you lose. Mm. But you didn't lose. I didn't lose. <laughs> okay. And then just started a whirlwind of wins. Uh, six round decision over Eric Winbush in Atlantic City. Uh, you knocked out Fred Brown. Uh, you knocked out Mark Rivera in two rounds. Uh, and then you moved to cruiserweight. Yep. Why'd that move at that point? Well, because of the fact the fact that the matter I had to lose too much weight. Well, I was skinny anyway. I would have never told nobody I was skinny because I thought skinny it had something to do with being poor. So you know, I ain't wanted to ever tell nobody I was skinny, but I couldn't make the weight. I couldn't make the weight, and I and I ain't have no weight to lose. So I decided to move up the cruiser weight. Okay, and then you started dominating that division. Uh, you beat Tyrone Booz in eight rounds. You knocked out Rick Myers in the first round in Atlanta, your hometown, mm -hmm. which I'm sure put a little extra on it. Right. <laughs> you knocked out Jeff Meacham in five rounds. You knocked out Anthony Davis in four rounds. And then by 86, uh, you fought Chisanda Muti. Yep, Muti. Yeah. Uh, who was actually the former cruiserweight uh, challenger. Yep. Knocked out in three rounds. Beat Jesse Shelby, beat uh, Terry Mims, and then you got your first world title tryout with uh, Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Yes. Were you nervous coming into that one? Oh yeah, I'm just, <laughs> and the thing is, is that uh, he was a 
he was would call a mama boy too. You know, he loved his mama. So he, he even went to jail because a situation with him and his daddy and, and, and by his mom. And, I, you know, I was that way too. And I love my mom. And, and so in coming in, you know, I had seen this guy fight. Now, I knew he could fight. All the other people, you know, I kind of thought they couldn't fight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, not this guy, though. But him. Oh, yeah. Like that, I'm telling you, it, it was it, it, it was different, and and so you know at this time, you know, I'm thinking we got four gold medals, and I'm the bronze medal. How in the world they throw me in a championship fight so fast? Mm. And so I realized that you know I'm you know my mama told me don't complain. You just go out and do your very best. And so, and so what I did, I just, I, you know, and, and this guy, Dwight Muhammad Kwa, we, I'm telling you, now we have to fight in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia, on the 4th of July parade. I'm sitting here, just sitting on the back of the car, waiting to ride, and I hear these people hollering, watch out, watch out, watch out. He jumped off his car and come and just grabbed me around the neck and, you know, scared me. Huh. <laughs> you know, it, it bothered me, you know, because, you know, I'm like, and everybody looking at me and say, oh, man, he going to kill Holyfield. Huh. So, and so I was listening to the interview one day and my sister called and she was complaining and saying, why are they going to send him in there with that crazy guy? And like this, he, 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 he just got up there. Why did he, why did, and you know, I just kind of felt so doggone bad that my sister didn't have no, you know, didn't think I could, didn't think I could win. And you know, I, you know, but I just act like tuned it out. And so, so when we came to fight, I just realized that Cause, you know, cause, cause he said some, some kind of little bad things to me. He said, "I can't believe they sent a kid to do a man job." Oh, okay. Like this, like this. He's trying to get in your head, basically. What, you know, and I was like, you know, you know, and you know, and I said nothing, but I would, I would take the off like this. But my mama said, "Now you can't let nobody know what they're getting to you." She says. I don't want nobody to know they getting to you, nobody but you. If you don't tell nobody, then won't nobody know. <laughs> and I just and so and and I took it like that. And um, and when it, when it, when the fight, I remember when that fight, that bell ring, I jumped on him. I won the first three rounds. Well, uh, the ring called this the best cruiserweight bout of the '80s, of the whole decade. Yeah. Uh, it was absolute hell in that ring. Yeah. Was that the toughest fight of your life well, at that yeah, point? It, it was. Yeah. It was because everybody asked me. They always asked me. I said, I said, my first championship fight. I said, I said, I fought a guy. I said, he was shorter than me, but his arm was longer than mine. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, how has that happened? I said, I said, he had monkey arms. His arms, I said, his arm was longer than mine. I play, and it, but it was amazing that uh, you know I'm that it was, it you know it went 15 round, I lost 15 pound. Yeah, I had to go to the hospital, right. and I remember when when I was I was telling my manager I said look you can have this belt. He said, "What you talking about?" I said, "Look, I was like I ain't trying to die young." <laughs> I said to him, "I ain't trying to die young." He said, "Evander." You'll never have a fight as tough as that. And you know what? I never had a fight as tough as that. Well, your kidneys failed during that fight, right? No, my kidney didn't fail. Okay. It just, I just, I lost 15 pounds. Aha. Uh -huh. I, you know, I, I lost 15 pounds. Right. And you actually won by a narrow 15 round split decision. Yeah. But you still won. And now you're the cruiserweight champion of the world. How did that feel? All right. It didn't feel great then because I was I couldn't think of nothing. I was just so glad that it's over. 
<laughs> that fight is over. I, I don't want to even think about that. Then all of a sudden, you know, at the day after that, I, I started feeling better. And then I realized, okay, I'm the champion, but I don't know if I, I want to fight that guy again. <laughs> like that. And so it, it was just a very tough decision. Well, then you fought uh, Mike Brothers, mm -hmm. knocked him out in three rounds, but this wasn't a title fight. No. So your first defense was against Henry Tillman. Yep. Who had actually beaten uh, Mike Tyson twice as an amateur. Right. Seventh round knockout. Mm -hmm. Boom. And then you actually unified the WBA, uh, WBA belt and the, w, and, and the IBF belt uh, when you fought Ricky Parkey. Right. Knocked him out in three rounds. Mm -hmm. Then came Aussie Ocasio. Yeah, Aussie Ocasio, yes. 11th round knockout. Mm -hmm. And then you offered uh, Kawi a rematch. Sure did. Why? After going through that hell the first time. Well, the thing is that, the thing is was, I remember, he, I remember what he said. He said, how can, so, 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 what people said after the fight, they said, what happened? I said, he was fighting a man this time. I said, you remember he said, how can I have a kid to do a man job? Yeah. I said, so he had a man this time. And I said, I was the first person to ever knock him down. Four rounds. Yeah. Well, you knocked him out yeah, in four rounds. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? I mean, to go through what you went through the first time with a, a narrow split decision mm -hmm. to now, no one could say anything. Well, you know, the, the whole big thing was, Stepping up and facing, you know, it's a maturity, yeah. Mat maturity, and uh, you know, and you know, I felt better, and you know, and and you know, I had never been number eight round, then had to jump and go fifteen and went to fifteen. I, you know, man, I, I was paying for, I, I was all messed up. <laughs> I was so glad to get out that ring. I was so glad to get out the ring. Okay, uh, so then in 88, you became the first universally recognized world cruiserweight champion after you defeated uh, the lineal and WBC champion, Carlos de Leon. They stopped it after eight rounds. Yes. I'm talking about which he was, he was a very good fighter. And, you know, because he, he had been, he had been a uh, two-time, two-time cruiserweight champion for the WBC, and and I didn't even know that. But and the fact that we fought, I, you know, my whole thing is that I realized putting a lot of pressure on people and staying in people's face, and I had quick hands, and and you know, you know, I could, you know, my whole thing, I had I had these things that people kind of thought I was kind of crazy because I said, oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm willing to die for what I do. Mm. I said, you know, I said, look, they said, man, you, I said, look, I said, look, I'm going to die trying. I mean that if I die before then, then it wasn't meant for me. Mm. I said, but I said, I said, I ain't no, I said, I'm not going to live and let somebody outwork me. I, I'm going to outwork them. I'm not, you know, and, but the whole thing is that, you know, I, I knew how to, I, I had great stamina. I had great stamina, and I, I realized that I wasn't going to quit. Well, after that fight, you announced you are actually moving up to heavyweight, and at the time, Mike Tyson was the heavyweight champion. Yeah. Why move up to heavyweight? Because that's not really your natural weight. You're more of a, a skinnier kid, mm -hmm. you know, and you're moving up, moving up, but now to be at heavyweight, there is no limit to heavyweights. <laughs> you can find a 300-pounder at that right. point. You're absolutely so you're right. taking a major risk here. Yeah. And, but I knew that I would be lying to myself to stay in cruiserweight and and and, and say, because I was the strongest in cruiserweight. I was the strongest person in cruiserweight. I was, I was the monster in cruiserweight. You know, when people see me, when I just look at it, I can see them say, oh, my goodness. They knew what they were going to get. And so the whole big thing is, and what people didn't know is that Mike Tyson is the one that made me realize I could do it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was, 
his arm was shorter than mine. Now, he he was quick and he was very explosive. I said, now, if a guy got short arm like that can hit them, I can hit him too. And my arm is a lot longer. I said, now, I don't have explosive power, but I I have movement that he didn't have. I, I had so many things that Mike didn't have. But because Mike did it, that's no reason why I can't do it either. And so, you know, Mike kind of inspired me to, to, to take that chance. Okay, so now you're hitting the heavyweight arena. Mm-hmm. You first beat uh, James Quick Tillis, knocked him out in five. Uh, Tillis had actually gone the distance with Tyson. Yeah. One of the few people that actually did that during that era who didn't get knocked out in 30 seconds. Um, and then you beat former heavyweight champion uh, Pinklin Thomas, mm-hmm. knocked him out in seven. So you're hitting the heavyweight division hard. Mm-hmm. Then in 89, you fought Michael Dokes. They called this one of the best fights of the 80s. Mm-hmm. And the best heavyweight bout of the 80s. Was this a tough fight? Yeah, definitely was. Because I was like, I was like, man, God, no, he, 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 even though he got that lump, he got these hands, boy, he had, had very fast hands. Okay, and then you continued winning. Uh, you beat uh, Adelson Rodriguez mm-hmm. in two rounds. Uh you beat Alex Stewart um, in eight rounds. Then that next year, uh, you beat Seamus McDonough sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. four rounds. And by this time, you were the number one contender for the heavyweight title, but you didn't get to fight Tyson yet. Nope. Do you think Tyson was ducking you at this point? I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think about it. Because the point of the matter is that you know, you know, I want to f- I want to fight for the championship, but it's rules and regulation. So you know, one thing is, my mama says, "Son, don't ever be in a hurry. She don't, she don't 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 sit here and make it." My mom had these things how you made yourself a clown, and you know by bragging about yourself because you're so anxious to do something, then you get there and you don't do it, then people going to talk about it. My mama said, son, just, just be quiet. And just be ready when it comes. And so then the most important thing for me to be ready when it comes, most so then just you telling everybody, it's my turn, it's my turn. I hope it is my turn, but I don't want, I don't want it to slip away from me. Yeah. Well, I mean, but in boxing, though, I mean, you have rules and regulations, but it's not a league like the NBA or the NFL where you everyone fights and then at the end, it's like people pick and choose their fights, you know, based on the promoter and how much money will be made. So, yeah, I mean, I could see where there could be some frustration because you're the number one contender for two years and you're not getting the fight. But right. then you are promised a fight with Tyson. Mm-hmm. He just had to have this little filler fight with some unknown guy named Buster Douglas. Right. In Japan. You went out there. Right. Now, this fight, and I interviewed both Tyson and Buster Douglas about this. This fight was, the anticipation was so low for this fight that no American venue would even take this on. They had to go all the way out to Japan (laughs) to even do this fight. Uh, Mike Tyson didn't take this fight seriously at all. Uh, him and Bobby Brown were partying with a whole bunch of Japanese girls <laughs> the night before, probably drinking or doing other stuff. You know, Bobby would even tell him, Mike, you got to fight tomorrow. He's like, ah, this is nothing. Whatever. So, so they said, Bobby said that he was, he was, he was with you in Japan and uh, y'all had girls dancing. He was with you dancing on tour. Like dancing with the girls. No, he said they, y'all had girls dancing. What he said? Whoa. Mike Tyson and I were in Japan. We basically stayed up all night partying yeah. with 12 Japanese girls. And yes, yes. Bobby, Bobby's a good multiplier, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it was just me, Mike. I kept telling Mike, you need to go to sleep and he's get some lying. sleep. He's lying. Stop lying, Bobby. <laughs> he said, you need to get some sleep 
for the fight tomorrow. Well, he can have all the girls, right? I just believe he can have them all, huh? Right, right. He said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good setup. Yeah, go to the and you keep all the girls, huh? He said. He said, then you told Bobby, listen, I'm not no amateur. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I did talk that shit. Right. Yeah, Nobody can beat me. I got this. I go to bed whenever <laughs> I got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> And you told Bobby, he worried too much. You got oh, this. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now, you had actually seen Buster Douglas fight before, though. Yes. And what'd you see? He was, he was a good fighter. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, when you're a good amateur fighter, that means that this is how you learn how to fight from the amateur. And so, you know, he good jab, good right hand. I'm telling you, he, and, and he's a big guy. Not, he's not a little guy. <laughs> he's a big guy. So I, I, I realized that, that, you know, a man, so people had, were telling me when I got to Japan that uh, they have seen Mike out there in the streets. You know, so, you know, you know, so with me, I didn't say nothing because the fact of the matter, I didn't want nobody to think that I was on nobody's side. Because whoever win, I got to fight. Right. I, I can care less. I'm telling you, sometimes you go place and everybody, I'm like, like I got to fight whoever the winner is. And so it, both of them going to be tough. Mm -hmm. It don't make no difference if I fight Mike if I fight him. Both of them going to be tough. I know that. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't, so I, I don't, I didn't even give it a thought, man. Who you want to win? I said, look, I said, Whoever, I said, I'm going to fight the guy who hand they raised up. I said, now that's the guy I'm going to fight. Yeah. Well, it was 42 to 1 odds <laughs> against Buster Douglas. <laughs> Whoever bet on Buster made a fortune that night. Um, you were there ringside. And the fight happened. Now, Buster Douglas gets knocked down. Tyson to this day, feels that he got a slow count. I watched the fight over and over and over again. I brought this up when I interviewed Buster. I said, that was not a slow count. Buster, by the time it was like, I think like seven, he was already like ready to go. He was just letting it count up. And as soon as he got close to 10, he popped right up and he was ready. That gave me a long count. Oh, I wasn't the long playing, count. but it was the truth. The long count. Let's so, do it again and count. As soon as he hit the floor, it was 14 seconds when he got up. All right. So Buster, they said Buster, when they asked Buster, and Buster denied it. What you think I mean, he... Well, look at it right now. You can look at it right now. Look in your phone and it's counting. Right. Okay. Buster also, so Buster, he also said that you had a long count. I had a long count? Yeah. He said that you had a long count. So you got hit with a, with a Tyson uppercut. You went down. And when you watch the fight, right, and I, I watched it again this morning, to me, it was very clear that you were not dazed. You could get up any time. You waited until about the nine count to fully come up and say, okay, I'm ready. Right. But according to Tyson, and I remember I watched a clip from his Broadway show, he, he is convinced that you had 13 seconds on yeah. that mat. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, that he was convinced that, that you were given 13 seconds and technically he knocked you out. Right. And he still says that to this day. Right, but they don't say how many seconds he got. Right. That referee was scared to death, like, oh my gosh, 1,100, <laughs> 2,202. His count was longer than mine. He's talking that smack. Right. Okay. That might so, be a discussion. We're supposed to do a podcast together. Oh, you, you and Mike? Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be an interesting one. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't make the, I didn't make it then. And he said, "Yeah, he it must have been to... that long." Did they count the fifteen? Yeah, or well, whatever. Do you feel it's a slow count? No, I, it didn't seem slow to me. It didn't seem slow to me either. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's just one of them things. I'm like, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you you have somebody, anybody come up and say they ain't gonna be able to. They gonna have to wind it back and all this, and, and but 
It looked like you won in the way because they knew because they knew it's gonna take time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but to get it back, you know, I you know, it, you know, it's not like they speed it up. <laughs> I slowed it, slowed it down. I'm saying, you know, and they say it's a slow count, but I I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Cause well, cause Buster was ready to go. It's yeah. not like he barely made it to the 10. No, right. he was like, okay, I got knocked down. I'm about right. to get back up. Yeah. And he got up and proceeded to just go in on Mike Tyson. Right. Started hitting him, started landing some punches, hit him with a nasty uppercut. Mm -hmm. And knocked Mike Tyson down for the first time. When you saw Tyson get knocked down, what did you think? Nothing. Nothing. Because the point, because the, the, the fact is, you know, if you, you get up and all that, he got up. And, 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 and you know, the, the thing is, the thing about the game of boxing, you know, the shot that hurt you the most is the shot you don't see because right. you weren't in Spain. Yeah, no, he didn't. He didn't see that one coming. Oh, you know, you yeah. know, you know. I'm telling you, I mean, he caught him good. Oh yeah, no, that, that uppercut when you see it in slow motion, that was a clean, yeah. clean uppercut. And then you think, of, you know, actually, you think about how big Buster Douglas is, yeah, and how he caught him with that shot. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Mike still with the smallest heavyweight then. <laughs> he was the smallest heavyweight then. Like this and that, you know, because everybody always asked me about it. I said, look, I said, look, man, I said, I said, yeah, think about how much hard you have to have. Even though you got, I said, your arm's shorter than everybody. I said, you got to go through this and, 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 where, and to, to get a reach. I said, right. he jumped off the floor to hit people. <laughs> I, said, I said, he jumped off the floor. Yeah, he jumps off the floor to hit people. He knocks them out. Yeah. Right. So then when he got hit with that uppercut, he dropped Tyson and it was over. Tyson tried to grab for his mouthpiece at that point. There you go. And that 10 count hit. I think Tyson said that it was quick. It wasn't quick. Tyson was out. Yeah. The biggest upset in sports history is what they call it. Yeah. And I remember we were all watching this fight, and I remember right afterwards, they zoomed in right on you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you were the one that was supposed to fight Tyson next. Yeah. And obviously, this was not going to happen now. Yeah. I mean, the th the th you know, the thing was is that, and they, and they, I said, well, I said, I said, my job is not to come here to fight Tyson. My job was to fight the winner. I said, that's it. I said, you know, and, you know, people are like, I, but what do you think about? I said, it ain't nothing to think about. I said, I still fighting for the championship. I said, I didn't come here to to see. I said, whoever win, that's who I'm gonna fight. Right. I said, so why is I gonna be disappointed? He said, but you, do you know how much money you gonna lose? I said, I said, well, I ain't never made none yet. <laughs> I, said, I said, I said. My goal is to be the heavyweight champion. That's it. That's I said, it. Look, I said, look, I said, look, I said, if if I won it for Mike, it was still gonna be the same to me. If I won it for Buster Douglas, it's still gonna be the same. I said, I said, I want to be the champion. I said, you know how long I've been waiting for this? I said, ever, I said, ever since I was eight years old. Mm. I said, I was told that I could be the heavyweight champion of the world. I said, now I, I'm glad for it to come. Right. October 25th, 1990. You guys weighed in. You came in ripped up, 208 pounds. You were ready. You were prepared. And then Buster Douglas stumbled in at a 246-pound weight. He had a gut. <laughs> he was not in shape. When you saw that weigh-in and saw the way he looked, what'd you think? No, it wasn't nothing to think because I had seen him fight. He, he was a big guy in a way. Everybody was talking about his weight, but that was the weight when he fought Mike Tyson. But he was only at that weight because, you know, he felt bad because his mom had just passed yeah. and all that. So he had went through a lot of a lot of stuff like this, not eating and all this and stuff. I said, so it was a different situation. But I seen I seen Buster Douglas fight fight. Way heavier than that a lot of time, and beat the daylights out of people and knock <laughs> people out. So, so you were you weren't uh, counting him out at all. Wow, no, no, no. no. Well, uh, this was not the greatest fight in the history of boxing. Uh, you 
basically beat him real bad. You hit him with a uh, a straight right hand. He went down, and it was over. Were you? Well, when he hit you with that uppercut, and and you went down, you know, you were kind of laying flat on your back for a while. But it, it almost seemed like you could have gotten up, but you couldn't tell whether you wanted to or not from the outside looking in. It, it didn't seem like you were just completely, you know, you didn't look as bad as Tyson did when he got knocked out. It looked like you could get back up. Was that, was that accurate or no? By that time, it was the world was on. It was, it was terrible, man. It was a bad time. Yeah. I'll tell you, it was... I'm lucky I even got in the ring. <laughs> that was a terrible, terrible time. And it never got better for quite a while. It didn't get better. And uh, I remember people even kind of made fun of it. I remember, like, was it in Living Color? Did mm -hmm. a skit, and it was like... <laughs> You know, it was like with puppets or something. They had Buster Douglas like, oh, I'm down. Give me my money. Give me my money. <laughs> you know, um, now you become the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And, you know, I, I talked to, to Buster Douglas about this. Because I guess after beating Tyson, Don King sued him. And he had to go through all this crazy back and forth. And it was just a big hassle. And he was kind of depressed. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, everyone has control over what they do. But after he lost, he went into a very deep depression. He ballooned up to 400 pounds. He actually became diabetic and then fell into a diabetic coma. And, you know, that was sort of the turning point in his life. He said that after that, he realized, okay, I gotta, you know, I gotta get my life together. Did you ever talk to him after beating him? No. No, nope. right, we we you know we sit beside. We went to, we have been you know they when they have all the heavyweights and they have us together and all this mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, well, I never had a problem with none of the fighters because the fact that the matter, you know, boxing it's it's one of them, it's, it's competition. But I you know after the fight, I'm like you know, ain't yeah. nothing to be mad about. You 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 gave your very best at that time, and that's it. It just didn't seem like he gave the very best at that point. A I lot of people were basically it. like, "Look, he he just he didn't come prepared. He lost, and then he just started spending money and, and getting fat, and then to the point where he it almost killed him." What? You I'm see talking, what I'm saying? I'm talking about you. You, you have your choices. You know, yes. I'm, my my whole thing is that you know, I don't really pick people up or put them down and say, you know, it's just the fact that, you know, you have a choice in life to what you choose to be. And, you know, my whole thing is, you know, I just want to do my very best. And, you know, and, and I just, I always had, had things kind of set up to, to stay on the right track. Mm -hmm. So now you're the heavyweight champion of the world. And your first defense was the battle of the ages with George Foreman. You were 28, Foreman was 42. You weighed 208 pounds, he weighed 257 pounds. Did you feel like this was gonna be an easy win or did you know you were about to go into like a, a world of hurt going into this fight? Well, I, I, you know, George Foreman only promoted his strength. His strength was his everything. Yeah. And like this, and so, you know, I'm so he, he, he pulling the big old truck on, <laughs> on his shoulders and all this yeah. and stuff like that. And so, you know, I had people talking about, well, he did this, he did that. I said, look, hey, I said, boxing, boxing is not all boxing. I said, no. I said, he got to try to hit me. I said, no. I said, he's slow as Christmas. I said, <laughs> I said, I said he's slow as Christmas. I said, you know, he's, he's not fast. I said, you know. So he throw these big shots. But the, the difference is say, he got good timing. And so and that's what I realized because I pulled back and by the time I pulled back from the shot, the shot ain't got done yet. Bam! I, I bring my head back because that's how slow he is. His, his timing, but he, he got right time. He know that you gonna you gonna come back at the right time. When, when you, because he's supposed to be on miss me, and 
I come back. Bam. When I come you. back, it's coming. Oh, yeah. Right? So I realized, oh, okay, then I got to dance around him a little bit and, and, and pack him like this. And and so the whole big thing, the whole big thing about boxing is making the guy come forth while you punching at the same time. That's how you can maximize your power on him. And I was able to do it sometime, but he, I'm telling me, he, he was a good discipline fighter. I'm telling me, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't lose all this energy on me. He, he was, he was able to push it off with the big old arms and, 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 and maul me. He kind of mauled me in the corner a lot. You know, I couldn't even get out. He, he was that, so much stronger. Well, yeah, you said the hardest you've ever been hit in your life was yep. by George Foreman. Yep. You actually went back to the ring and <laughs> asked your quarter if all, all your teeth were still there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was like, it was, man, you know, to get hit, and you know, and I asked him, I said, what did he hit me with? <laughs> I'm like, all I know, I got cracked. And I go, what did he hit me with? He said, <laughs> he said he'll hit you with a looping right. And so, so you know, a looping right mean you don't see it because it, he threw it wide and it come down, bam, like this. So you, my hands are up and they come between them, bam, like this. So I, I didn't see it. So, you know. But you know, after you know, after that, you know, I had two, I, I had, I had, I had two more rounds, and I had to go, and I said, okay, <laughs> wow. But you know, after me, after, you know, he, he was, everybody knew that how strong he was. Well, yeah, it went all twelve rounds, which people gave yeah. him a lot of props for being at his age and everything mm -hmm. else like that. But ultimately, unanimous decision. Yeah, you win. Um, so then. You signed a deal to actually fight Mike Tyson again. Uh, originally, he got delayed because he got injured in training, and then he got convicted for the rape. Mm -hmm. So then he got sentenced to six years uh, in prison. So now you got to get back on the, you know, defending your, your crown again. Um, so you were supposed to fight... fight uh, Francesco Damiani. Yep. But he got replaced by Burt Cooper. Right. Um. So this was an interesting match. What do you think happened here? The my, the match with who? With a uh, uh, Burt Cooper. Well, wait, yeah, Burt Burt Cooper. Good left hooker, and, and all this, and he was almost like you know the, the, the Joe Frazier, the Joe Frazier thing. And it come down and stuff like this, you know, and you know, I'm telling, you, and he he a big puncher, and but, you know, I could, I I was a good fighter that I could be in and out and all that, and it, he he just made, I hit him with a body shot, I hit him with a body shot, and he started to run, then I caught him with a right hand and and must have taken him off because it hit him in the ear. And he turned around, man, and he fought me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, he fought me, he fought me off. I said, oh, shoot me, man. <laughs> but, you know, I'm telling you, he actually, he, he was getting ready to probably quit. But I throw that one more shot and it hit him in the ear, changed his mind. Well, there's a little bit of a sort of gray area here because he hit you uh, with a right hand that, you know, threw you against the ropes and Mills Lane actually called it a knockdown and gave you a standing eight count. Well, he did catch me in that shot. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He, he did. You know, he, he actually hit me, boom. And I, and I go, oh, shoot. Like this. And I'm like, okay. Like this. Then all of a sudden, he ran and then he ran he ran into the uppercut. I, I shook him, and you know, and you know, and and, and, and pretty much that, that you know, it's a it's amazing that that you know, I knew that he always throw them looping shots, and I got I, I got hit with that. Then uh, then he he went he went with that Joe Frazier style like that. Oh man, I I, I bust my glove on him. Hmm. They had to put. They see in in that fight they had 
they had to stop the fight to bring another glove for me to put on mm-hmm. that I bust the glove in. Oh, I bust the glove on. Right. That was your first uh, technical knockdown in your whole professional career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but by the seventh round, Mills Lane stopped it. Yep. It just got too ugly. <laughs> so yep. you won that. And then in 92, you fought Larry Holmes, mm-hmm. who I interviewed as well. Um, that was the first time you got cut. Yep. Uh, your whole eye got gashed open uh, from an elbow. Yep. Um, but you still won the fight. A unanimous decision. Uh, Larry Holmes, I, I talked to him about this. You know, he he admitted that he lost, but he said he had a detached retina during that fight. No, the, the fight of that went to the fight Holyfield. <laughs> I went into the ring with one eye, this eye was out. I couldn't see. I had a detached retina. I got it four days, four weeks before the fight. Four weeks with a detached retina. And it wasn't from a fight, it was during the training or something, I don't know. All I know that I couldn't see in this, see out of this eye. But you know what? Out of four blindfolded, blind, no blind, for the money that I got for that fight, I, I ain't gonna turn down $10 million for it, you know what I mean? I got $10 million for Holyfield, so I would close my eye and keep, come on, where he at? <laughs> People think I'm crazy, but I'm not, you know, like, why, I wouldn't have done that. Why you do that? You risked your, 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 your eye. I, I risked my eye anyway. Oh, that's why. But, but well, uh, well, that fight went 12 rounds. Uh, Holyfield ended up winning in a decision. And I wasn't even in shape. I wasn't even in shape because I couldn't, I couldn't train because of, the, because of my eye. And if I was mess, messing around, get hit or anything in the eye, uh, it might go back into that whatever it was in sleepy eye again. So I, I just let it go. I let it go. and Went out there, I did what I could do. And that was it. Gave them a good fight, everybody was happy and everything else. I don't know if they were happy because I lost or happy because I went the distance or I just plain happy, you know. But uh, that's the way that went, man. Well, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know it, it's almost like in anything that you do, you you know you got in a fight with the detached retina. Mm-hmm. And so, now, so these are the... You, yeah. you, you could have called it off. I'm you could have delayed it. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, either what I'm saying, anytime, anytime you you get into some, you know, you got, you know, it, it's, it's the times that I got in the fight but I got in the fight for the wrong reason. Now, and one of the reason, the one of the reason, you know, it's just like the third bow fight. The third, the yeah. Well, we'll get into all that. Okay. Then. Yeah. 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 But you know, with, you know, with with Larry Holmes, I realized that you know, I I didn't know that he had a detached retinum and stuff like this. Cause shoot, he he threw his arm up, and I remember running to the elbow. And getting them thirty six, them thirty six stitches and yeah. stuff like that, and uh, and and so, so my mama had already told me. My mama had told me when I was a kid. She said, "Don't come here with no marks on your face." <laughs> and so, that's so why I remember coming home. Now before before I even now before I even went to the fight. My mama had came over and she said, because I bought her a house across the street from her, and she came over and she said, boy, do you not know you ain't got a mark on your face? And I said, well, mama, you know, I'm good, mama. 
and and I said that and come back after the fight with 36 stitches because my mama, if my mama would never said that, I would have never said that I'm good. Yeah, pride before the fall. And yeah, yeah, so that happened. Not that you so, didn't fall, but you got cut. Yeah, so, yeah. So, when I, so when I come home and she see the 36 stitches, she said, boy, what did I tell you? I said, mama, I'm a grown man. You know what? I said, I'm a grown man. Now, don't, don't come to me with none of this. I said, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. And, you know, she, she just she just got quiet. Okay. And then started the trilogy with Riddick Bo, who I also interviewed. Bo was only 25 years old at the time. Uh, you were 30. So he's a little bit younger, but not, not a huge age difference. He had won the silver medal in the 88 Olympics. That first fight was brutal. Um, round 10. They called it the round of the year. What happened in round 10? Well, you know, you know the, 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 big thing, see, the big thing with, with Bo, he the first person I realized that I didn't do what my mama told me to do. Okay. So my mama told me, she said, don't become friends with nobody you're going to have to compete. He, she said, son, when, you, when you're friends with people like this, you, you tell them things that you shouldn't tell them. Because y'all talk about everything. He says, don't do that. So, you know, so when I lose that fight, I realized, I said, man, you know, Bo used to be my sparring partner when he was an amateur. Mm -hmm. He was amateur, he was good. Yeah. He used to be my sparring partner, and I I, I helped him out with his, his little son and all this, because I, I had money and stuff like this, and I was just, I was just real good, but... Me and Bo were just real good friends. We talked about everything. <laughs> then all of a sudden. You got to fight him. I, I got to fight him. And, you know, because he accustomed to joking with me and I'm joking with him. He he come up to me when the fight get ready to start. And he said, let me tell you something. If you don't run, I'm going a, I'm to a, knock you out. So I'm like, oh, I said, so I realized me and him sparred so many times and all this and stuff like this. Now, Bo is a good fighter. He can fight inside and outside. Mm -hmm. But Bo used to run out of gas. I was able to run Bo out of gas. I make him fight, fight fast and he run out of gas. Yeah, but not this fight. But you're right. Well, Evander wanted to prove that he was the best. And I had the opportunity to prove that I was the best, and nobody wanted to give up. So that's why the fight became one of the greatest all rounds, one of the greatest rounds in the heavyweight history. I had him doing the funky chicken. You seen that? That's <laughs> that was the funky chicken. I, I mean, I was, I was landed on. We just battled, you know. You know, he got the best. Yeah. So when the when the fight was over. You know, I know he had one. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you got knocked down in the eleventh, which is your first what I consider real knockdown. Yeah. And then ultimately, uh, you know, twelve round unanimous decision. Yeah. And yeah. it was it was fair. It, yeah. You didn't get robbed. Nothing. I, I, I went to the, you I won fair and square. I, I never said nothing and all this and stuff like this. And so, and so, now I was mad with Bo, not for the fight. I'm mad with Bo called. He didn't take the fight with Lenny Slewis. Hmm. And I, he chose to take another fight. So what he did, he took the money down. You know, I'm sorry. When I when I became when I became the heavyweight champion of the world, this was the highest time anybody made big money. I made more money than everybody. Mm -hmm. And so Bo take the money down. Yeah. He go into a I think a $3 million fight, and, but he win and all this and stuff. And so so he had to fight me again. Well, I mean, that first fight, that was your first professional loss. Loss, right. How did it feel? Well, after, you know, you know, my whole thing, as bad as that everybody may have thought I felt, I was like saying, well, 
when, 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 when I got out of there, I said, wow, how about that? God, no, you know, I said, man, I got a lot farther than I actually thought. <laughs> I'm saying, undisputed two-weight division, was undefeated in all this. I said, I, I, I felt that I did good, but it, it just ain't time for me to quit. Yeah. I said, so I, I get it next time. Right. I'm saying, I, I forgave myself. <laughs> I'll get him the next time. Get back into it. Yeah. Right. And by that time, you were a household name. Mm -hmm. uh, you were doing Coca-Cola commercials. Yeah. You had your own video game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing. And by the way, I remember I talked to Tyson, you know, because the biggest video game, boxing video game of the era was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I mean, people yeah. still talk about that. And I remember we had talked to Tyson about how you know, he just didn't sign a great deal for that. He got some money up front, but it ended up selling millions and millions and millions of copies. They gave you $50,000 for a three-year deal with no royalties, but they made like one, uh, 1. $1.7 billion to like... Hey, we, that was a bad deal, but I don't think it was right. 50 Gs. It was um, 1.2 point something, something in that range. Mm. But still in all, it was just a really bad deal. I didn't know anything about businesses, anything. And what the hell. Right. Bad business it. move. You know, for your uh, Sega Genesis boxing game, did you get royalties or you just got a check? I, I got royalties. Okay, good. So, so you made out well with that. Mm-hmm. So you had to fight Alex Stewart in a rematch. 12 round unanimous decision. And then... Riddick Bowe and Holyfield 2. It was called Repeat or Revenge mm -hmm. for the WBA and, w and IBF Heavyweight Championship. And this went down as one of the most bizarre fights <laughs> of all time. Round seven. <laughs> Tell me about what happened in this insane round. But the fan man came in. <laughs> now, but I'm talking realistic. You know why the fan man came in? Because it's obvious that they were saying the odds were so that if I knock Bo out that round, MGM going to lose everything. Coach, you know, everybody was betting on that. Oh, shoot, let me, let me just throw some money in here. A, you know, Evander May, you, you just never know. And that's when I had Bo all hurt and all this. And the fan man, the fan man came in there. The <laughs> fan came in that round and flew and stayed in, come in the thing. And we waited about 15 minutes. Yeah. Like this, you know. Yeah. Well, the fan man came in. He got kind of tangled up in the ropes. And, got, and then got his ass whooped by, yeah, I think, Riddick Bowles. Riddick Bowles on Taraj. Beat, beat him up real the bad. Daylight, beat the, beat the daylights, daylights out of him. Out of him. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, well, Bowles' pregnant wife, Judy, fainted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Had to be yeah. taken to the hospital. Yeah. Um, I mean, this became known as the fan man fight. Yeah, yeah. And after about 20 minutes, it was restored. You know, they finally got back to the fight. And then you ended up winning uh, in a 12-round uh, decision. Now, I remember I interviewed Bo, and he felt he got robbed in that fight because he felt that that 20 minutes of rest, uh, you know, allowed you to really kind of recover, and, and that's why he lost. This guy named James Fanman Miller dropped from an airplane <laughs> with a parachute, almost made it into the ring, mm -hmm. kind of sort of got into the crowd, and the crowd started beating the shit out of him. That's what I'll question. <laughs> in fact, the mom. I mean, what were you thinking when this happened? I was bewildered because I never seen anything like this before. And I have him come into the ring. I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know if I should run this way or keep fighting because maybe Holy Spirit might hit me or something. I didn't know what to do. Right. And the fight stopped for like a half hour. Yeah, and I was freezing cold by the time we started fighting again. Okay, because at the end of the fight, Holyfield ended up winning by majority decision. But you felt that, that was unfair because of what happened. And the fight should have been actually ruled in no contact. Yeah. 
or, or technical draw, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 it's okay. See what happened in the third fight. I'm the first guy ever to knock him out. He ain't been the same since. I'm telling you. He the one that need rest. That's they came to save him. I'm the, look, he got it. He got his pants up to here, to to his chest, trying to keep from getting hit in the stomach. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I was like, you know, I, I, it, it's it's kind of sad that the how person, you know, look look at the camera. You the one that you thought you gonna come in there and and, and knock me out, and you didn't. I said, I said, and. and See, I had a Emmanuel Stewart with my uh, was 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 my coach then. Mm -hmm. So Emmanuel Stewart come in and I say, "Look, Evander, you fought him wrong the first time." He says, "He said, Evander, you out boxing the the first six round, then it's then last six round, then you can get him because he gonna run out of gas. Mm -hmm. He trying to keep up with you, like this and just like Emmanuel Stewart said, I, I was able to win it just like that." He said, I just, right. And now you're champion again. Yep. Okay. Um, so that next fight, Michael Moore, a former WBO light, light uh, heavyweight champion. He was trying to become the first Southpaw uh, heavyweight champ. Now, you actually dropped him in round two, mm -hmm. but it went the distance, and he won. Yeah, because, you know, I, I messed up my shoulder. I, yeah. met, I messed up my left shoulder, and, and he... He did outpoint me and all this because the fact that the whole thing is with, with no left hand, I wasn't able to, to get in the long range because I missed him. He, I was, he was he, he's a good counter puncher, and 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 he he won the fight, mm -hmm. and, and and I knew that he won the fight, and you know I was like it didn't bother me because I the whole big thing is that I didn't quit. Yeah, and uh, and so. Michael Moore tells me, if you messed up your arm the first round, you would have just let the people know that you hurt. They would just stop the fight. <laughs> yeah, no, but you went the whole 12 rounds. But yeah, you know, I went up. I I and I told him, I said, if I knew, I would have, I would have, I would have told him. I said, because I said, I just wasn't gonna just give it up. I said, that's one thing I wasn't gonna do. I said, you, I said, I said, just as you fought me in that one shoulder. I said, I said, I said, I wasn't gonna give it up. And so when it so when it came down to the next one, you know, I made the adjustment. Well, you went to the hospital to get your shoulder checked, mm -hmm. and they diagnosed you with a heart condition. And you had to announce that you retired from boxing mm -hmm. at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the Nevada State Athletic Commission did an investigation and they felt that it had something to do with HGH. What is that? That's, that's what it said. It said that his condition, that your condition was consistent with uh, human growth hormone use. No, you see, the thing is, you know, they, um, in, in, that, in that same situation right there, when they, when, when they told me I had, a, say I had a heart attack, they gave me too much morphine. Uh -huh. They gave me too much morphine. Okay. And, and that, was, that was the whole problem because I didn't have no heart when, when I didn't have a heart problem. They gave me too much morphine. Okay, and so they mistaked, mistook that with HGH and, and so yeah, on. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, because I, I ain't never, I ain't, I'm the most tested athlete ever. <laughs> they, they, because everybody was saying, ain't no way in the world that liberty guy can fight them guys like that. Right, and move up and wait like yeah, that yeah, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. I say, I say, so, <clears throat> you know. Test me. I said, sure, you know, they ain't never, they ain't never caught me in nothing because I ain't never did nothing. Right. My own thing, and, and, and that's what it was. Well, um, right around that time, you were watching this preacher named uh, Benny Hinn. Yes. And you said that you felt your heart heal watching him. And no, you, I didn't. No? I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that. You didn't say that. Okay. No. M my mistake. Well, because... You end up becoming friends with him, and he he laid hands on you. Well, well, well you know he he's a minister. Mm -hmm. He he ministered, and he now whether he healed me or not. Only thing that I was saying, what he said, go back, go back to the clinic and get them to check your heart. Right. And so so now that's what he told me. 
go back to the clinic and tell them to check your heart. And he said, he said, we saying that he's healed. And we go back and they go, oh, God, no, you know, it's, it's hard. So, so the, the whole big thing is so, only thing that he did, he said, go back and tell them to check your heart again. And so the point of the matter, they say, did he heal you or not? I said, but that's the only thing he told me to do. He said, I said, he touched me and he said, go back and tell them to check, check your thing again. Well, according to reports, you wrote him after, you know, you came back with a clean bill of health. They said that you wrote him a check for $265,000. No. So that's not true. No, that that is not true. My whole thing is that Benny Hinn, that you know, anytime an offering, they 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 start telling you, he said, if if we can raise this this much money for this this thing to do these things here, I said, oh, okay. You know, my whole thing is that I I I I, I wrote them a check for for the money they need to go to to the event. Mm-hmm. And so I did it because I'm the one that make all the money and and I had it to spare. Mm-hmm. And so, but he, all these things had took in place. He then, he then, it's not like he, he healed me then all of a sudden. But I had already, I already sent the, sent, I already, I had wrote the check for the thing before I, before I even got there. Got it. I mean, yes. they're they're trying to almost phrase it of like, oh, he healed you, and you wrote him yeah. some huge check. Yeah. Like he yeah. was trying to take advantage of you being a Christian and right, everything else right, like that. Right, right, yeah. right. And, 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 and which 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 is sad. The whole which the whole thing. Uh, uh, you know, you know, because that was the whole thing about about me in boxing because because I I said some. You know, some. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard as as a Christian. I'm not telling nobody else. This look, this is this is what worked for me. Mm-hmm. I came up my whole life as a Christian like this. We give God praise, you give God the glory, and that's it. I'm saying, but the point of the matter, I ain't asking nobody else to do it. I ain't ain't ain't. Right? This is what I this is what I believe, and if this is this is what I believe. I I ain't never mad by what nobody else believe. I'm telling you, know, if you I'm telling you, you know. In life, it's just real simple. You know, everybody got a choice to believe what they choose to believe. I'm not mad. Whatever people believe, oh, okay, then that's, that's what you believe. Then that's what you do. It long, and it ain't affecting me. You ain't making me do it. And I ain't got to do it. And it's okay. I'm the, I'm the, which, which, which in my whole career, that was the whole big thing that allowed me to be as good as I got mm-hmm. because these are these are the things that happen. Yeah. This is the reason why they put men in in them fight so early because they said Evander kept talking about Jesus. I yeah. said, man, I said, that's all I know. I said, look, I was brought up this way. I said, look, look, I said, I'm, I'm always thanking God for what he have done for me and all this and stuff like this. I said, I know I came up poor with nothing. My, I said, this is what my grandmama and my mama were telling me. He said, boy, you know, you got, you got to give God the glory. Like this, I said, you know, oh, okay, then I give the glory. Well, was it around that time that you actually bought uh, the 250 acres or 235 acres? Yeah. Uh, in Georgia, and you started to build the biggest single family home in the whole state. You had a 45,000 square foot main house, a 4,000 square foot guest house, 109 rooms, 12 bedrooms, 17 bathrooms, the largest private pool in America, 350,000 gallons. Um, what made you build such a huge house? Well, you know, I didn't know what huge was. <laughs> that you know, was I'm huge by anyone's standards. I'm, 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 you know, I'm from anybody who, anybody who, who, who studies stuff like this. But with me, my whole thing is that, that you know, they they start building and all this, and and I got all this money, and and of course, none of my family members, 
you know, ain't nothing that they they know to a point to and all this. And so then so we have nobody to to check to how big it got the, I didn't tell them I want a big old house. I got a drawing and all this, and this is what they did for the drawing. Because I was able to pay for it. Yeah. You know, so by by me being able to pay for it and all this and stuff, and you know, I I realized that, you know. You know, they they beat me up on the situation and, and you know, and but I was able I was able to handle it. And so you know, that's all matter is that I wanted my kids to have a better life than me. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, wanted to leave them something. Right. Spectacular house. Um they say the house costs a million dollars a year to maintain. Yeah. Um, how much did it cost you to build the house? Uh uh it, the, the the whole the whole thing was about about fifteen million. Fifteen million. Then the land. Yeah, well, and I the land I, was relatively I, cheap. I, I'm assuming. I, yeah, I I got all that land for you <laughs> live nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, they're saying that after everything was built, it was worth like two hundred thirty million. Yeah, like yeah. It was mm-hmm. spectacular. Yeah. Um, and you know, I talked to your old uh, assistant this morning, and she said that you really use this house. You know to help underprivileged kids. You'd have these huge 4th of July parties. You'd have hot air balloons. You'd have, you know, uh, pool parties so the kids could swim and could really see like, okay, like this is possible. Here's a guy that grew up in the projects and look what he's done. Yeah. Um, You gave away college scholarships. You Mm -hmm. gave away five college scholarships every year. I think 25 in total over the course of about five years. Um, and you were really utilizing this house a lot. You weren't just sitting here by yourself, you know, this huge, you know, <laughs> Scarface mansion. You were really using it for the community and to inspire people and everything else like that. Um, but then we get back to your boxing again. So then you fought Ray Mercer. Um, Ten round decision. You were the first person to knock him down. Mm-hmm. Now. Leading up to this, uh, Bo had fought uh, four times. He fought uh, Buster Mathis Jr. Um, He fought Larry uh, Donald, uh, George Luis Gonzalez, uh, and uh, Herbie Hyde. Mm -hmm. So now it comes down to the third fight in this trilogy. It was called the final chapter. What happened here? Well, you know, um, the thing is, is that everything was great for me. Then all of a sudden, I, 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 I go home to Atlanta, and uh, and and I guess I guess something they had put something something in the food wasn't right and I was sick. Huh. And but I ain't got number I ain't got number I think by ten days before ten or twelve days before for the championship fight. And and I had worked all that and I said, look, I can't afford it. I said, I can't afford to lose this money. I said, shoot man. I said I said, I I ain't I don't you mean tell me I don't been in I don't been in training camp for for what twelve weeks and in these last ten these last ten days I said I I I said I said they ain't gonna give me no ten million dollars <laughs> I said I ain't gonna lose I know if I lose the ten million dollars the ten million dollar thing I and I may not make man can make can get another fight for ten million dollars. So I realized because Mike Tyson had Mike Tyson had just Mike Tyson had just got out of jail mm-hmm. and all this and stuff like this, and and now now the crazy thing about that he come out of jail and they make him rank number two, number two or number one, <laughs> right? And and Reddy Bo Reddy Bo is the number one guy. And I just said, I'm like, and I'm like, I said, so, 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 you know, and what happened is I, 
I go and I say, you know, I'm I'm trying to think what the, the I, had, I had I they they told me the sickness, but it, you know, my energy up, then my energy is just drop mm-hmm. like this, and so I say, and I, I know that I would go in the fight that way. Yeah, I mean, this is considered the most brutal fight out of all three. Well, yeah, uh, but- knockdowns on both sides. Um, it, it was just, it was, it was really a massacre for both of you. And this was the first time it didn't go all 12 rounds. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately in the eighth round, uh, you got TKO'd. Well, yeah. But you know, the thing is, the thing is, it went with that thing, you know, I, you know, my whole thing is that I knew I was going to get my all to the end. And, and, and I, I realized I realized I get I get stopped, and and I'm like, and and uh, you know I, I was mad, but I said, how can you be mad when when you clams up in that brain and know that you were sick? Right, you had hepatitis. Yeah, hepatitis. Hepatitis. That, that was that was yeah. it. I, I had hepatitis, and 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 so. And so so the doctor was telling me, he said, you know, you could have got suspended. Huh. You know, because you could have gave that to somebody else. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, from the right. blood so, and everything. So yeah. he was telling me that. And so, so my whole thing, so I'm like, I lose a fight. Now I can't, you really can't tell nobody you, you got hepatitis <laughs> because <laughs> you, you put yourself, you put yourself in to get suspended. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't say nothing, nothing about it and all that and uh, shoot, you know. But, you know, it, you know, like I told Bo myself, I said, Bo, you know what? I said, work for me. He said, what you mean? I said, I got the Tyson fight. <laughs> I said, I got the Tyson fight because what you did to me. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, because he would have gotten it. I said, yeah. Okay. Because the point of the matter, you know, and everybody said, man, Man, Holy getting killed. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. So, 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 so Tyson ended up fighting uh, one of these other guys, then all of a sudden, and then he decided to fight me. So, before the Tyson fight, you fought Bobby Chess. Yes. Knocked him out in six rounds. Easy work. Uh, Mike Tyson fights Bruce Selden for mm-hmm. the WBA title. And Tupac was there in the audience. And right after, the fight, well, you know, he ends up jumping on the guy that took try to take a death row chain, and shortly afterwards, Tupac gets killed. Did you ever meet Tupac? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you have a relationship at all? Not, not really. I just, you know, he's a rapper, and you know, my whole thing is that you know, you know, you know, we talk and say hey and all that, but you know, you, you kind of bump the fist and and that's it. Keep it moving. Yeah. 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 But one of the guys in the car, Keefe D, is now being charged with his murder. I don't know if you're following this story or wow. not. Yeah, 27 years later. He wrote a book about the situation. I did an interview with him. Wow. And uh, all that basically culminated in Las Vegas arresting him and now charging him. Wow. Um, so then you guys finally fight. November 9th, 1996 at the MGM Grand in Nevada. The odds were five to one in Tyson's favor. Did you feel like that was a little, little skewed? Right. The odds never made any difference to me mm-hmm. because see, the odds don't fight. You know, you fight, and like this is up to you to do. You know, yeah. I had, I had this thing where they look, hey, I, I don't care what y'all say, <laughs> I, as long as you just let me do my very best. You know. Right. I mean, because at this point, Tyson had been in jail for six years. He came out. Not quite the same Tyson as before. When you watched like the, the Selden fight, did you think that this was Tyson in his prime, or did you feel like his skills were somewhat diminished? Well, my whole thing ain't think of because he fighting this guy. Okay. I'm like, I can style make fights, you know. I'm to, you know, I'm to, you know, if if I tell you what, Tyson kill anybody who pull away from him. Just pull back, he kill him. Yeah. But people that that who could press him a little bit, he had problems. 
Well, here you are in the ring with Tyson. So the fight starts off. Both of you guys are doing your thing. And then round six, um, Tyson gets cut from a headbutt. Uh, the referee said that it was accidental. Um, you know, later on, Tyson would always say that you were headbutting him on purpose. He know he intentionally headbutted me because I was intentionally headbutting him. Right. You know what I mean? He could have said, yeah, I was headbutting Mike because Mike was headbutting me, but he never said that. He said he was just blocking his head. What's your take on that? Why? Anything that you ever see in that match, you see him hit but Milper. He take his head, bam, like this. Now, here's a guy that hit but me on purpose. And but but ain't nobody seen me hit but him. I said, only thing that only thing in boxing when both people step step in, step in together, they they hit may clash. Yeah. And so the whole big thing is for you, if something bothered me, for me to act like it didn't even for me to act like it didn't hurt because the whole big thing, you don't show no pain or nothing. Because anything that you show that it hurts you, people people do it even more. Yeah. And so it's just a whole big thing with me. You know, every time I ever box somebody at some time, if we both step at the same gallery, your, 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 your head going, you're going to hit head like this. Mm -hmm. But the whole big thing is that you act like it didn't hurt. You know, the whole big thing. Life is about pretending. And in boxing, if you bust a show somehow all the time you're hurt, man, you'll be done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blood in the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And then in the sixth round, you caught him with the left and dropped him. And this was mm -hmm. the first time Tyson had been dropped since Buster Douglas. Mm -hmm. So everyone was just like, oh, okay. Th this, is, this is a real fight now. Um, and then the seventh round, with 15 seconds left, uh, Tyson lunged at you. You came forward again. Headbutt. Once again, unintentional. So then we get to the 10th round. Um, you end up punching Tyson and you basically threw him across the ring. Um, you know, you chased him, you start hitting him, everything else like that. Um, and it looked like it was going to end right around that time, but but they kept it going. Did you think that by the 10th round, the fight was pretty much over, or did you feel like, no, nah, we're, we're still going? Well, I can, the, the, the big, thing with, big thing with me, I ain't hitting these shots and all that, so I didn't get them clean, So, but I know that he was woozy. Then come the next round, I realized when, when, I, when, I, when I got in him and look at him like this, he was wobbling. So I realized, I said, I just got to, I got to catch me this right. Catch me this right. So, so once, I, once, once I called him, he started stumbling. Then, you know, they, they, they stopped it. Right, because by the 11th round, uh, the referee just said he's seen enough. Yep. He stopped the fight. He became the first person since Muhammad Ali to win a heavyweight championship three times. Um, Tyson was very respectful. He said, thank you very much. I have the greatest respect for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but you just beat Mike Tyson. <laughs> now you've had lots of other tough opponents, but Mike Tyson was in a different caliber than mm -hmm. everyone else. Yes. You know, for people my age or around that age, this was like the greatest boxer of all time. Everyone was shocked over the Buster Douglas thing, but we still kind of was holding on to him still re-becoming the greatest boxer of all time. But now Vander Holyfield cleanly beat Mike Tyson. Was that your greatest victory at that point? Well, at that point, it, it was because the greatest thing that had ever been for me was making the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, not even me being coming the heavyweight champion of the world the first time, but, but Olympic was that thing where that, oh shoot, if it wasn't for the Olympics, I, I just would have never got got that far anyway. By me making the Olympic team was, was the first thing. And right. then, you know, I, with, then me fighting Tyson, and the, that was a, the next big thing because the fact of the matter is that, you know, even even me being Buster Douglas, 
I had people mad with me and said, you ain't a champ. You, you, you ain't beat Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. I'm like, the, the whole thing was about Mike Tyson. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm talking about all these people. Right. You had been chasing him for years to have this fight, essentially. Not, I, not chasing him, but it, it was yeah, like you yeah, were I'm trying from, to make it happen for, yeah. what, six, seven years now? Yeah, no, see, eight, eight years now. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that was him. I'm talking about, like, I, you know, you know, I know I beat, I beat the guy that beat Mike. And they... But but no. but but to be fair, he wasn't. People considered him to be not in great shape for that fight, so they weren't they weren't totally giving it to you, right? It wasn't. It wasn't about that. It's the reality. The reality is that you know what? Every man stands for himself to whoever they fight. If you, if you ain't right and you don't carry yourself in there, ah, oh, you know, oh, yeah, you're gonna have people saying that. But still, I realize me me personally. I want to win every fight. I'm like, you know, and you know, but even though I didn't, I'm the only man in the world to become the four time champion. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this, I, I know that. And so when, 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 when people say anything, I say, look, man, I say, look, all I want to do is my very best. I say, in my very best, I'm the only man ever been heavyweight champion four times. Now I said, now Ali was the first person to do a three. Yeah. I said, he the first person to do a three. In a four. I said, you know, I said, now, I was the second person that did a three, <laughs> but I'm the first, first one to, to, to four. do a four. Well, well, look, I mean, I I'll tell you, in terms of people like myself, fight fans, at that point, that solidified Holyfield for, in our eyes. It was like, okay, he beat the baddest man on the planet. It was a clean fight. There was no asterisk by it. Mike Tyson was in great shape. It is what it is you are now considered the greatest heavyweight of the era when that happened in my eyes. What I said, and I, you know, I said, you know, cause you know, see the big thing that when I told the people, I said, look, hey, I said, I said, look, all the thing I told y'all, I wasn't going to run. Right, you didn't run. I said, I, said, I wasn't going to run. Yeah. I said, I said, you, the way you, when you see me skipping all around, I said, no, uh-uh. I said, I said, look, I say, if whatever he wanted to do, that I'm going to do it right there, right in front of him. And I said, I said, like, I said, it, it, I said, it didn't bother me. I said, because the whole big thing, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, one thing about boxing for me is that you got to please the people too. They the one that pay the money. <laughs> right. I, they pay the money. Yeah. I said, you know what? I said, I want to sit here and, and, and run around the ring. And, and, and I, I said, no. I said, they ain't want to see that. They want to see somebody fight him. I said, that's it. I said, yep. I, I said, all, I said, all I did, I came, stood right there in front of him, and you said, okay, yep. that's what you want to do, just do it. Yep, and you beat him fair and square. Yeah. So then seven months later, there was a rematch. Not not a lot of time between these two fights. They're they're itching to get it, get it back. Usually rematches are a year, two years. Mm -hmm. why, why so fast? I, I don't know. But <laughs> you got off of the fight, you took it. The, 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 thing, the thing is this, is that, you know, I'm saying, you know, they they gave me a little, little money the first time, you know, which, you know, which was, which was $8 million. I want you, I, you know, but it was a little money to me. Yeah. Like this, because, you know, but the second, I said, look, yeah, yeah I got to pay me. Pay me more. How much you get? I got I got thirty five million. Thirty five million. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was a, was a, <laughs> That's why he took that fight after well, seven months. <laughs> like this, in my eyes, I said, I said, hey, thirty five million, man. Hey, let's I, do I, this. Said, I said, look, like you know, they were see they had they were they were trying to give me thirty, and I said, look, I said, look, man, I I said, look, I I really can't go for thirty. No, no. Now this is now this is what I did as a person myself, you know. My everybody who been working for me, you know, I'm like it was five people, and I told them I said, look, you know what I'm gonna do for y'all? Is what I'm saying. I'm gonna give y'all a million dollar bonus. Mm. They said what? I said yeah. They said, what? Oh, that's where that extra five million came from. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I said, look, you can't, 
You got to, got to come up with five, five, five me. That, I said that, that one. And, and, and they decided and they, to and do it. And they came up with the five million? And I just, and I, I, and you know, I said, here you, here you million dollar bonus. Here you million dollar. I said, uh, I said. You made five people millionaires that Yeah, day. yeah, that one. I, 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 you know, I'm telling you, know, so my nephew, my nephew about 20, 20, 25, 26. I said, you know, you, you, you get your two. <laughs> I said, everybody, I said, now, I said, now, I said, if anybody ever asked you, they say, now, now, I pay them, I pay them $250,000 anyway. Hmm. I said, I said, all right, I said, okay, this is, this is y'all bonus. Wow. Oh, you, I said, look, I said, look, hey, I said, look, I said, I said, I said, I, I just want to make everybody right. Mm -hmm. I said, because. I said, when this thing is over, I probably you ain't gonna never get nobody else go go bonus you a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was called the Sound and the Fury. Mm -hmm. This happened on my birthday, actually, June twenty eighth, nineteen ninety seven, for the WBA Heavyweight Championship. Now, originally, the referee was supposed to be Mitch Halpern, who refereed the old one, mm -hmm. but Tyson's camp. You know, argued. Oh no, he let all these headbutts go without calling it. So Mills Lane, rest in peace, became the replacement. Right. So this fight starts. First three rounds, you're dominating. Um, but then the second round, the headbutt happens again, which I'm sure pissed off Tyson once again because he was accusing you of purposely headbutting him. As the third round was about to begin, Tyson came out without his mouthpiece. Mills Lane saw it and told him to go put his mouthpiece on. Did you find that odd at all? Wait, 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 you know, I, I think you can do it. Because, you know, you know, you you getting right there and you just walk out there without the mouthpiece. You just don't send it. You just don't show the people your teeth. You know, you just don't show your teeth. You yeah. can keep your mouth shut. So, you know, the fight starts. You know, everyone's going at it. 40 seconds left in that round. Tyson bites off a chunk of your ear. Was it true that they said that you bit half a, a piece of his ear off? I mean, that well, I did bite some. Piece I did bite some did because I spit it out. When you go to movies, I go, Pew. there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I have never heard of anyone biting someone in a sports event. Any sports event. Have you ever heard of a biting happening in boxing? Uh, in the history of boxing? Yeah. Oh, this is a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I'm talking, you know, I'm like, see, and they've said when a person gets a concussion, they'll bite. Huh, <laughs> like okay. this. Like this. I'm like, I'm like, I'm saying, somebody knocked the daylight, so she, you know, she so end up, I like, my brother hit me in the head. I I bit him so don't go on. <laughs> boy, I, I, boy, I just I almost pulled a plug at him. I, you know, you know, you know, I'm like, if they, I'm talking about when, you know, even biting is part of quitting. Right. Anytime, anytime. You know, as you mess with a kid and you keep, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they bite they, your they, hand. Bite they you, just yeah. want you to leave alone. Just leave right. alone. But you had never gotten bit before. Uh-uh. No. Mm -hmm. Not only did he bite you, but he actually bit out a chunk of your ear. Well, well yeah, I'm telling you, he, he, could, he could, got, Can we see what your ear looks? Is it the, the yeah, right yeah, ear? Yeah, right here. I'm telling you. So it's still, there's still a, a piece missing. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah, just, there's a college. Yeah, like that. Cartilage, yeah. 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 You know, I, you were so mad that this happened that the first thing you wanted to do was bite him back. Yeah, <laughs> you wanted to what, like, like bite his face or something? Well, or? Wait, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. You know, the thing is, is that I, I'm very focused on not embarrassing myself by doing what somebody else do. Yeah, but this is very left field. What, like, you know, yeah, no but, one was prepared for this. I remember watching this with my friends, and we were like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, because, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking, when, when, he, 
when he when he now when he bit me right there. Yeah. Now I wasn't gonna bite him. I'm gonna kick him in the I'm gonna kick him in the ball. Like this, <laughs> right, because you were jumping up and down like crazy. You're like, what the hell just yeah, yeah. and so so all of a sudden, you know, and you know, and what bothered me is that now he think that I'm scaring him. Now he feel confident. Yeah. And so and I and, and so when I, when I look over I I see him just he ready to go now. Now he really ready to go because he thinking. And as soon as they said go, I catch him right in the mouth. And he bite, he bites me again. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember the announcer was like, Holyfield just got bit in the ear by a dirty Mike Tyson. And they call it disgusting tactics. And, and honestly, in retrospect, I don't know why they didn't stop the fight at that point. Well, because Mills Lane wanted to stop it, but then what, the, the commissioner came in and yeah, let it go? Yeah. See, yeah, because the whole big thing is they didn't want people to start clowning and say, you know what? You 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 stop the fight. You cause people to lose money and all this and stuff. So, and called Bill Lane said he started to, and but the, the people told him not to. And and he said he said then when you he said then when you came in you hit I I I hit him I hit I catch him in the mouth and he bite my other ear. Yeah. So don't nobody know don't nobody know. That he bit my ear too. I get back to him and I said, I said, he bit my other ear. Then that's when my friend Tommy, Tommy Brooks, who who, who my, tra was with was, was training, he called me a lane over there. He bit him on his other ear. Yeah. Like this. And, and that's how me a lane realized and stopped yeah. the fight. He, he said, stopped the fight at he that said point. He said he had yeah. to stop it at that point. He said, because, you know, he said, the man's showing he wanted to get out of there. There was rumors that you shaved your teeth for the Holyfield fight. Why? I don't know. They said that never. Allegedly, they said that you you shaved your teeth. So what? What that do now? They shave. I unshave the teeth. Don't grow back. <laughs> That's very true. I mean, I mean, how shocked were you? Okay, you got bit once, and you know he bit you, and he spit out a piece of your ear. Yep. On the floor, <laughs> like <laughs> that one thing. He, he like he, he had to pull it out, <laughs> savor it. <laughs> and, and yeah. I, know, you know, I mean, it's really just barbaric, brutal behavior. Like well, you know, you know, you know. My whole thing is that you know. Now, I personally, I personally understand that in any in anything to when it comes down to mental stuff, or when you just trying to get out of something. Yeah, I'm know. like you know, I'm some that. See, that's the whole thing. The the whole big thing is that. Everybody kind of know a way to get out because call somebody already don't told him, say, you do, Bill Lane said, you do that again, you out of here, you know, like that. Right, so he did and, it again. So, so, so what happened, he thought I was going to be scared. Yeah. But you so when I came and caught him that shot, he grabbed me and bit the other one. Because yeah. he said, look, I, I'd rather be out of here than to be in there with him. Well, yeah, and I remember when you guys interviewed with Larry King, I mean, he admitted that he was losing that fight. Yeah. And he was just mad and, you know, he felt he was getting headbutted and he just, just blacked out. Yeah, um, he ain't black out. He ain't black out. No? Oh, no. He, you no, know, he, did, he did it on purpose. Yeah. No, no, no. I feel you. You know, the big, the big thing in anything, the big thing in anything, when, when the point when you, when you stand up, when you stand up to a person and this whole big thing is that, that, that I'm not going to quit. I realize that this is this is a tough match and all this, but I'm not gonna quit. Cause that's that's the only thing that defeats you that you start thinking about this quit thing. And so you know, I so, now, so, oh, so instead of quitting, he just bit you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause they Got don't it. told him, you better not bite him again, you out of here. The first thing he does uh, is bite, bite you again. Bite again. <laughs> he says, I, in other words, I want to be out. I mean, but how shocked were you? Like, this motherfucker just bit me again. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it was. My old, my old, man, you know, I'm like, you know, you just, just, just told a man I don't. I, yeah, she just quit fair and square. Yeah. Yeah. That like, was, I, I can't do but, this. But, 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 of course, that feel like you, you cowing out. 
Yeah. In other words, hey, I can't beat the guy. I can't beat the guy. I tried to beat the guy, and God, yeah. I, I'm done. I, I, I can't. I can't take it no more. Yeah, I mean, uh, at that point, Mills Lane said the fight is over. Um, Tyson tried to fight whoever at that point. Remember, he tried to get get at you, and like security ran oh, in, God, and it was just a mess. And that's it. Now, now, with that happened, now. I, I was responsible for that. And, you know, and cause I, you know, I was like, you know, you know, I'm still, I'm still mad cause you're bit by ear. And, Both ears. But, but he's sitting there walking like this, like, like he really want to fight. And, and I, and, and I look and I see it. I said, oh, oh, you, you doing that now, huh? Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, I told. I said, "You doing that now? Uh-huh. Like, like, like you really mad? I said, you ain't want to fight." <laughs> that's when he I, I never trying. knew this part of the story. Yeah, okay. but, that, but that's the reason why he. he oh, then he tried to rush you yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, like, like, and you know, my whole thing is that because you know, I'm telling you, you, you don't, you don't sit here, you pretending that you want to do something that you really don't want to do. Hmm. I was that that's the reason you bit me twice. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know. The point of the matter, you know, you, if you don't bet me one time and, 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 and the man give you another chance, yeah. like this, you don't go bite it. You bite it again because you, 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 cause he thought that I was going to be scared. Yeah, and you weren't. And, 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 you know, and so, you know, with me, I realized that when, when I was looking at him and I can see that he just got, he just, Felt real strong. Oh, I'm gonna get him out the year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop him like this. And, I, and you know, I, I went in there, caught it, caught that next shot, and he he bit me on the other year. I yeah. see. How about that? I mean, they call this the bite fight, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So this is like the two of the most bizarre events in fighting history. You are both in the, you know, you're in the middle of both of them between the the guy parachuting in and then getting bit. You know, it's just you're a magnet to this kind of thing, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, Teddy Atlas, who I guess uh, briefly trained Tyson uh, 17 years ago, uh, actually predicted that he would do something and get himself disqualified. Uh, he called Tyson a very weak and flawed person. But to your credit, you actually forgave him right away. Yeah. Because one, one thing is this. Now, I bite my brother all the time. I couldn't whoop him. Boy, she got that boy. Boy, I, I set them teeth in him. By the time he gone, I get I I got to get to my mom before he catch me. Then, got my mom, and I get, he gonna kill me if, it, if it, I would get to my mom. I I get to I said so. I my whole thing. This is how I realized that he, he just won out. My whole thing is that. You know, I knew I couldn't whoop my brother, but it, 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 then he, he get me in a headlock. He won't, man, I would bite him, bite, bite him. And, and you know, when I bite, I, ain't nothing like them teeth, man. They, they, they the perfect thing to make somebody scream and like and make them, oh! But by the time they doing that, you just, you got to know you got to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and I, yeah. I did that. And, and I, but my whole thing, even when that happened, I thought about that. I said, God dog, I guess I guess I get caught up with getting bit because I, <laughs> I don't do it a lot of times. So the whole big thing is that's reason I was so quick to forgive. Because my whole thing, I, I realized, I realized it is when when somebody got you and and got you in a hope and you can't get it and you're not winning and all you want to just just get out, you know, you bite. Yeah. And and you know, and so, you know. You know, my whole thing is that I see, you know, you know, come, life is about forgiving. Life yeah. really is about forgiving. You have to, you have to forgive. And so I realized that, look, you know, I, you know, I understand, you know, I, I don't did it, you know. <laughs> so it's karma in a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, right. And then years later, you guys actually released Mike Bites, which heard cannabis infused edibles in the shape of an ear yeah. and holy ears. And yeah. you guys played with it, made some well, money well, off of it. Well, I mean, the, 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 the thing is, the thing is, is this. In, in a reality, 
Life is about forgiving. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you, you know what? You know, you know, I ain't do nothing to him, but I know, I know my brother and sister, he probably he he got now you know how it feels. <laughs> Your brother probably <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Yeah. Oh I feel boy, you, man. You know how it feels yeah. now, don't you? And you know, I've seen a few commercials and you know, with you right there, Mike sincerely apologized to you. He said, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I yeah. should have done that. He, yeah. You could tell Mike feels bad about that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, it's things that happen, but that, you know, like my own thing, I, under, I understand what forgiveness is all about. You know, I, I realized that, I, you know, like I told people, I said, I, I, I ain't been a perfect kid. It's not like I ain't, I ain't did nothing crazy myself. I said, yeah. I said, I got whoopings. <laughs> <sighs> well, unfortunately, there was no uh, third third fight after that. But I guess there really wasn't a reason for it because you won both fights. What's the point of a third? Well, money. Money. Yeah. The, the, so there wasn't an agreement? I mean, was there close to a third fight? Well, yeah, it, 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 it was. It was. It, it definitely was. And, you know, we, we, we talked about it. But uh, I guess... On on this side, they they didn't want to do it. Yeah. Well, so now you're going back to defending your title. Uh, you fought more again. Uh, knocked him down five times mm -hmm. when they finally stopped the fight. So then you unify the WBA and the IBF belt. Then in '98, you fought Von Bean, beat him by decision. But but after that fight, they start questioning you because you were 36 at the time. Relatively young, but sometimes the boxing world, this is sort of where you get this kind of yep. plateau. Did it bother you that they're kind of questioning whether, you know, your age was kind of diminishing your skills? Well, well, I'm, the fact that they start, you know, you know, I started fighting, I started fighting like a heavyweight. I wasn't fighting like that the cruiserweight and all this. Now I'm grabbing and holding no one to people. I'm just like, man, I hated that fight. I, I hated that. I'm in up grabbing people just like they used to grab me. I'm saying, you know, it's something, something about, it's just something about, I don't, I, I, you know, when I look at it, I say, wow, I see, you know, I see, you know, but, you know, but ultimately, I wanted it to. I wanted. Uh, I, I I wanted. I wanted be undisputed one more time. Yeah, and that's a, yeah, that's that's what the whole thing about. I I wanted to be undisputed one more time. So then in '99, uh, you fought Lewis. Yeah. It was declared a draw mm -hmm. after twelve rounds, but a lot of people felt that Lewis dominated that fight. What do you think? Well, I, I I felt that he didn't he didn't do enough, he, you know. Because I'm I, I, it's amazing how a person I said if if you go if you gonna win, what is winning? Taking a chance. You going you gonna put it in you gonna put on now. This guy he busted my eardrum, see, and, and so and, and the reason why I didn't fight a great fight. Cause he bust my eardrum by the second round, right. bam! You like this, and you know, you know. So I'm in an awkward situation, f fighting him, and you know, he, he just doing this, he he doing this, and he he would jump in there sometime. And so he didn't, they didn't give him the, they didn't give him the decision. I said, but you ain't, I'm the champ. You ain't. You ain't trying to you ain't trying to knock me out. You ain't trying to get in. You just trying you just trying to reach and touch somebody. And so that that what happened. Yeah. And usually in boxing, when it comes to the heavyweight division, you have to take that belt off the guy's back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Usually you don't get a decision <laughs> when you win the heavyweight championship. Well, but that was saying you you know what I'm saying you 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 ain't trying to. You ain't trying to do nothing. You just reaching out um, mm -hmm. and badly tapping and all this. I said, you know, you way bigger than me. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just like, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm so so you know, I'm just even now, they call that fight a draw. Right. They call that fight a draw. I know I beat him in the second one. 
Well, they... well, right, because when the second one happened, he won by unanimous decision. What, what, what? But, the, but, I, you know, I know I beat him the second. I know I beat him the second. So you feel he got robbed? The, well, it, it, it was worse than that because the fact of the matter, he know he didn't beat me in that fight. He, he said, "Well, you ain't win the first one." I said, "Yeah, they call it a draw." Hmm. I said, "I said, I said, see, I said that was wrong with people." Oh, you, you didn't win the first one. Okay, they call it a draw. I, I, so, so I didn't win. You didn't win either. Right. I said, I said, so I said this, so they just gonna get to you because you should, you should have won the fight. I said, look, mm. that's a whole nother fight. Yeah, I'm like, and, and, and it was, you know, it was, it was, it was sad because you know it was sad because he thinking all right because he said, you know, you know, you didn't, you didn't win the first one. I said, I said, you didn't win it either. That's when they <laughs> called it a fraud. I said, now, now. Now you're going to say it's all right when you know you you didn't win. I said, if they would have called a draw, it went all right, then, it, then we even. I'm talking, how do, how do, okay. They, they felt that you ain't beat me enough to get a decision because I was the champ. Yeah. I said, you know what? I said, and here, I, I got both of the belt. I'm, I'm more, I'm, I'm more, I'm almost there. You ain't got nothing but that one belt. I got, I got two belts. Mm -hmm. Like then I said, you know, I said, I said now, but you know, the, the, the thing is, he think, I, I said, look, I said, how you go? I said, it's a different thing. You, you, if you, you, I said, who do you think did more this time? I said, oh, well, you did. I, I said, okay, then I said, I said, but, if they would have called it a draw, then it would have been, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, because it happened to both of us. All right, then I don't get it and you don't get it. Then, okay, then we, we go, we try the thing again. Well, uh, in 2000, the next fight was Ruiz. Yeah. Uh, unanimous 12 round decision for you. Mm -hmm. And now you become the first heavyweight champion to win it four times. Right. So now you're in the history books. Yeah. How did that feel? I took that. It, you know, I'm telling you, know, at that time, I, I wanted to be undisputed because I mean that I got all the belts. You know, it's because the whole big thing is that, you know, to, when it, when it all come down, you got now they got another belt. Now it's four belts. Then it was three. You got two other people saying, I was a champ too. You know, I'm saying, you know, hey, hey, yeah, how are we going to be three champions in, in the thing? The thing come down, okay, then this is the reason when you were trying to unify where you got one champion, you got one champion where, where everybody know. This is the best person. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, you know, that's when you come up and you have a tournament. Okay, then we round everything to find out who's the champion. Yeah, but, but boxing is just different in that regard because of all the different belts. So, I mean, well, it just but, is but, what but, it is. But, but see, they shouldn't have all of them belts if they going to do I it agree. that way. I, I, mean, I agree. You know, I'm saying, but, but the, see, it, it, it appears that even if you have in all these belts, you you said okay. At at some point in time, we going we gonna wind everybody up to the to mm -hmm. to this one yeah. belt to know this is the champion. Then 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 you like this, hey, but you know you got everybody just man, because that was that was right. That way you you make more money too. Mm -hmm. Right. And then in two thousand one, Holyfield Ruiz two. Uh, he actually won to become the first Hispanic ever to win a heavyweight title. Mm -hmm. And then Holyfield Ruiz three declared a draw, so Ruiz managed to keep the WBA belt. Then in two thousand two, uh, you fought Hasim Rahman. Yep. Uh, the fight was stopped in the eighth. Because of how much damage he took uh, 
on his forehead. Yep. Um, at the time, you were ahead in the points, so therefore, you became the winner. Were you happy with that win, or? Well, well you know, I, I, I'll go knock him out anyway. <laughs> he, he, could, I, he couldn't beat me. <laughs> he was just a big puncher. Like, my own thing, you know, the art of every game is knowing that, you know, you know, the situation, I'm telling you, you know, he was a big puncher, but he, but he couldn't get his hands off because he knew that I was going to hit him first. Mm-hmm. And I got so, you know, I'm so, I'm, you know, my whole thing in all these different, it's, it's different fighters that give you a little bit more trouble than others, but I'm telling you, when it all is said and done, yeah, my whole thing, I would box it. I wanted to be undisputed. Heavyweight champ, but I want to close it out. I wanted to close it out as an undisputed. Yeah. And so when it all comes down to it, if you, I try. Okay. Uh, then you fought Bird. Mm-hmm. Winner, 12 round unanimous decision. Uh, but then in 2003, you fought James Tony, and your corner threw in the towel in the ninth round. That was the first time I've ever heard this happening with you. Well, in MC, you know, that did bother me because the fact of the matter is, is they was trying to get me out of the way where they could train, where they can train this. We had this other, we had another fighter, and you know, they they wanted, and you know, and which is which was sad, and I, you know, and and I, that's the reason I left. I said, look, look, you, you, I said, look, I said. I said, Jane Tony wasn't, wasn't even, he just getting his hands off first. I said, but I said, he wasn't hurting me. Yeah. And, and all this, and, and then nobody asked, then nobody check him for no steroid. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said he had quick hands, he was hit. I said, but why y'all ain't checking for steroid? He ain't checking for steroid. And then. You think he was on steroids? Of course he was on steroids. <laughs> he, man, he. He ended up cussing, slobbing all over, all over people talking, and I just I'm thinking, and 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 he had a feel that somebody said something about that, and he was trying, he was trying to say he wasn't on something when when I'm just, ain't nobody said you even on nothing, hmm. but he I'm telling I'm telling he would do, he, I'm telling me I'm telling me I'm like I said it was amazing I was telling you know I. In these whole in this whole situation, they they have cover up. They have everybody covering up for somebody yeah. for doing something wrong, and to point to to I say it, it, I'm talking, it's just it's sad. It make the sport to make the sports when 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 people cheat. I'm like you know you, you know you, the point of the matter. You gonna you then you gonna throw the towel. You gonna throw the towel at me. I'm not even hurt. Right. You, you didn't okay this. No, right. I'm like, you know, I'm just, it was just, you know, and you know, and you know, I, I said, look, I said, look, I said, it is sad when somebody can come and offer you something, you, you turn your man in, and oh, sure, I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna throw the towel in. Well, uh, then in 2004, you fought Larry Donald. Yeah. Uh, you lost a 12 round unanimous decision. This was the third consecutive match yeah. that you yeah. lost. Was that bothering you, losing three times in a row? That's my first time ever lost three times in a row. Yeah. And, 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 and of course, I myself said, wow. Ooh, I, I got to find out what I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to do. What, what, what the, what is the purpose? Right. Cause you're 42 at the time. Yeah. 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 I'm and, then, 40. and then the next year, uh, the New York State Athletic Commission actually banned you from boxing due to uh, diminishing skills, even though you passed all the tests. Yep. But then you came back. Uh, you beat uh, Jeremy Bates by TKO. Mm-hmm. You beat uh, Frank uh, Aquendo by unanimous decision. Uh, you beat uh, Vinny Madalone mm-hmm. by TKO. Uh, you beat Lou... Uh, Savarese. Yep. So you're just now winning and winning and winning, and you're 45 at the time. Yep. And this is what set the stage with uh, Selton. How do you say his last name? I don't know. Uh, 
Ibrahimov. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, when, uh, and yeah, and you know, of course, when when I when I when I lose that fight, then I I remember, uh, and I I watching the Ali Ali when he lost against Larry Holmes. Mm. And Ali said, man, I'm the only three-time heavyweight champion in the world. Why I'm trying to, why I'm trying to be four-time, what I, let somebody else break my record. <laughs> and so when I heard that, then I said, that's it. Right. Well, because after that fight, um, you got accused of steroid use. Uh, through a company called Applied uh, Pharmacy Services? Well, steroid use? Yeah. After what fight? Well, after the uh, Abraghimov fight. Oh. They, uh, they're they're no saying that there was a patient named Evan Fields, have the same birthday as you. The address for Fields hey, was uh, Field. Evander, uh, Evander uh, Street in Fairfield, Georgia. There was a phone number. That was, you know, when they called it, you answered. You know, there was a raid and it was under investigation. All of that. Do you know what I'm talking about? I heard the people. I heard the people ask me about. It. I said, right. no. I said, ultimately, you weren't no, convicted no, of anything. No, I told them. I said, I said now. I said, y'all, have y'all ever caught me in any kind of thing and seen any trace of anything in me? I said, look. I said, have you ever seen me look big, bigger than what I do? Right. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, it's amazing. I said, now, I said, the people weights that jump up, they they 60 pounds heavy this time, then they they small here and all that. I said, you ain't never seen my weight fluctuate up and down. All right. Once you got to heavyweight, you pretty much stay the same weight the whole I time. Said, I, I said, I yeah. said, look, I said, look, it's just real simple. I said, look, I said, how y'all going to just put that in somebody's mind just for somebody to say, you know, he, he crooked to it? I said, look, I, I said, I don't have to slick nobody. I said, I, I said, look, I'm not afraid of nobody. Right. I said, I said, I said, I can fight anybody. Right. I said, I got, the, I got that kind of skills. I can fight anybody. So you've never taken steroids, not, never taken human growth hormone, none of that? No. uh Got it. Mm -mm. Well, in 2008, you, you fought WBA heavyweight champion uh, Nikolai Valuev. Yeah. You only got 600,000 for this, which is the most, which is the least mm -hmm. you've ever gotten for a fight. Yeah. You weighed in at 214, he weighed in at 310 pounds. This guy was a monster. Right. He beat you, but they said that you were dominating the whole time. What that was that? Everybody everybody know that I I I won that fight. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'm like, I say, I say. I'm like, and everybody just boo. I'm telling you, we, we, we down, and these people, these people are booing. I said, I said, look, I said, everybody know I beat him. I said, I said, but I said, but I said, but I said, I can't get mad with him. I can't get mad with him. It's not like he said I, I wanted to fight, but uh, Don King, that was Don King fighter at that time. Ah, there we go. And, 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 and and so he got the decision. Did you ever work with Don King yourself? Yeah, I was Don King. I I was Don King. I was Don King ever since uh, 19, 1996. For how long were you with him? I we up to even to that fight. Oh, so you had been working with Don King the whole time. Aha. Yeah. Okay. Because Don King, see, for me to fight Mike Tyson. Oh, you had to sign with Don King. I had to sign with Don King. <laughs> <laughs> ruthless. <laughs> Absolutely ruthless. <laughs> what did you think, you know, um, in my interview with Tyson, uh, he talked about how he beat up Don King. In 2003, you beat up Don King. Mm. You know, I was, I was pretty immature in 2003. I was really upset. And I, I've done things I shouldn't have done. I really loved Don, and I really didn't mean to do that stuff back then. Allegedly, he said that you left him in a bloody pope. I don't know. I don't yeah, talk. you was high. It, it, it says that uh, 
Y'all was on his private jet or something like that? Y'all was on Whoa. The- yeah, that was pretty serious. <laughs> um, we were on the jet. I, I told this story before. I was on the jet. I had Jackie and I had my girlfriend with us. And um, Don was talking to me and he was talking about, man, we got to get these white motherfuckers out of our business, man. That's all these white motherfuckers do. Just come over here, me. You're going to sign this check, nigga. Me, you're going to be two rich niggas, okay? And so he had me on that, but as soon as I get on the phone, I, I'm going back. I'm going to make another deal with Don. I'm going to have millions again. Everything's going to be all right. But on the plane, I start doing some cocaine. And I'm getting ready to go see 40 million bucks. And I'm broke. I don't have a penny. So I'm on this jet, this beautiful jet, and I do the cocaine. And once I do the cocaine, and then um, it percolates, start percolating, I say to myself, Don is dissing me. He said, this is my motherfucking plane. He's sending my plane with the money he stole from me to pick me up. That's some bitch shit. And I don't know why I said that. I don't know why my man, why did my mind, why did I go there? Why can't I go somewhere else? Why did I have to go there? Why did it have to be about me? So it made this all about me. This hair plane is my plane, and he's making a fool out of me by sending my plane to pick me up, and I can't keep my plane. And um, I have all this festering up by the time I get land in Miami. And so we land in Miami. Dawn comes. And um, I get in the back, Jackie gets in the front, and the girl I'm with, she gets in the back with me. And then Don starts talking, hey, man, yeah, man, we're going to get this money, fuck these white motherfuckers, man, it'll be me and you two niggas. And for some reason, I just, I don't know, I just, I'm in the back of the road with and I just kick the boom, and it stops. It's on the 15, you know, with the highway. 15, yeah, yeah, 15 in Miami. South. Yeah, and um, I, oh, it was just bad, right? It, was, I, it just was bad. It was bad, so... Some kind of way, we chase him around the car. He and then he gets in the car. He takes off. He takes Just over on Jack. the highway. Yeah, he takes over Jackie and my people in the car. And I'm on the highway. The car to come. And I'm on the fucking highway. <laughs> How did how he beat up Don? King? How he beat up Don King? He said he was uh, on the private plane with Don King, and he was broke at the time. Looking at Don King with all this money that he made off of him, and then they went and took a you know they got in like the Rolls Royce. They were driving somewhere. Yeah. And he said he just lost it. He just kicked him in the back of the head and then chased him around the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he I, just said he I, couldn't I, take it anymore. I, I heard about. I heard about it. I heard about it. And you know, you know, my, I, you know. Do you think that Don King did you dirty at all? Well, I, I, I think in 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 the fight with uh, that that fight with uh, that that guy. Mm-hmm. And but you know, but after, of- after that, after that, you know. You know, he 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 didn't do anything no more right. than you know. Well, uh, that year, you ended up losing your mansion. Yeah. Uh, Washington Mutual Bank, I guess, was going out of business, and they had released documents saying that the the mansion was going to be auctioned off, and I guess Chase Manhattan bought it for seven million, and. What exactly happened in that situation? Well, in, in that in this in the situation that one of the family members borrowed money off my house. Wait, 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 wait. One of your family members yeah. took a second mortgage on a house they didn't own. Right. Wow. How much did they take? Uh, yeah. Too yeah. much. Yeah. And so with me, I said, Oh, well, okay. And you know. So I, I, I said, that's it. As cause it's kind of, it was kind of sad. After my mama passed, now everybody want to steal from me. Wow. And the thing, so, you know, it was one of them things that, one of them things that I didn't, I didn't want to call them out and all this cause they was old. Like I'm the youngest one in my family. And, and so, so these are these are one of the sisters. Your sister, yeah. stole from you. Yeah, yeah. So you can't even beat her up or nothing because well, well, she's a know, girl. The, 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 if it was a, if it was one of your brothers, would you put hands on him? No, uh. <laughs> but I would think I'm the youngest one, and when you come up that that way, yeah, man. But stealing is stealing. But yeah, 
but but you know it, but you know if if when the when them things that you know you know and so you know my sister them named not Holyfield, so they named one Holyfield. So so and you know so the respect that I had for them because they were like they were almost like a mama because they were they were they were that age. And because they had kids my age, <laughs> like this, so, so my whole thing is that I realized that I wasn't going, I wasn't going to put them in jail or anything. Oh, I would have put them in jail. Uh, you know, I'm saying, but you know, my whole thing, I wasn't going to do that. I, my whole thing is that I, I, I made too doggone much money to to stoop that low to do that to them. So, I, if I just, you know, just realized that I had to move. Well, I, I talked to your assistant and what she told me was that just a lot of business people just ended up stealing from you. Yeah. People who you trusted, who who seemed like they had the best intentions for you, ended up going behind your back and stealing from you. And then when you found out, they would send someone else and they would steal from you and and so yeah. forth. She just said it was heartbreaking because you're you have a really kind spirit you would help so many people you would help kids you would help family members but these people basically were taking your money well wait yeah it it it, it happened so i decided i decided to move i i you know because my whole thing is that you know cause my mom always told me she said son you know you you have more opportunities and you should stay somewhere where they, like this, you know, everybody know they taking advantage of your kindness. Go, yeah. I, my, my whole thing, I'll forgive and 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 move on. But you mm. know, I you know, but the thing is that when a group of people get together and they realize how nice you are and, and this 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 this, then all of a sudden, you know, you know, my whole thing, I just know you know, if you have a problem and, and I can help you. I I I help you, but you know, and, and these are the, but these are the things that, you know. The Bible the Bible tell you about they gonna get theirs, but the whole thing is I just want to be right in God eyes. I want to be right in God eyes that if I have it, and then if that happened, but it's not like it ever made me broke, cause. I still get these great opportunities. I just get these great opportunities, and 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 so it it shows me that, you know, more that I I believe and more that I I continue to do the right thing, then I get it back. Right, because you made over two hundred thirty million yeah. in the course of your career, uh -huh. quarter billion dollars. Uh -huh. Um, but. You know, between this situation with your sister stealing from you for the house, Rick Ross ended up buying the house eventually. Yeah. Do you know how much he bought it for? Uh, -uh. I asked him, man. You know, I got the, the, the uh, no longer my business. You yeah. know, I'm you know you know my whole thing is that I I'm not envy or jealous and all this and stuff. You know, but the, the point of the matter, I don't think about things that that's gone. It's it's, it's gone. Yeah. My whole thing is that when it, when I look at it, I said, "Well, I said, you know, don't nothing don't nothing hurt me because the fact of the, the the fact of the matter, I'm I'm so far ahead what I used to be, mm. and I can do pretty much anything that I want to do. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have problems. Well, yeah, I mean, along the way, you started a record label, Real Deal Records. You invested millions of dollars into it. Unfortunately, none of the artists popped off. Uh, you know, someone that comes from the music industry, starting a record label is one of the hardest things in the world that you could do. I always say that it's, in general, it's more profitable to buy scratch-off lottery tickets <laughs> than start a record label to try to break a bunch of new artists. Um, you had a restaurant, Holy Fields, yeah. which you invested, I think, around $8 million into, which ultimately uh, got shut down. No, no, it's still here. Oh, still around? Yeah. But do you still own it or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. My mistake. Um, you went through three divorces. Yeah. Which I'm sure were very costly along the way. Yeah. But you know, it is. 
you have 11 kids uh, with six different women. Mm -hmm. Every kid, their name starts with an E. Right. But you have two sons named Elijah. Yeah. Can you explain that? Well, uh, uh, one of the mothers, one of the mothers say, "Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna name my son Elijah," and and the other one say, "They were gonna make name his son Elijah too." I said, "But so, so the whole big thing because they were women, they realized uh, they." She gonna do it because she wanted to do it. I'm sorry, so so both of them, the, both of them named one of them named Elijah Jedediah, the other named Elijah Ezekiel, mm. like this, and you know, and so they they just got they got different middle names. Okay, it almost reminds me of uh, when I interviewed Gary Payton. Uh, he was married and he had a son named Gary, and then he ended up cheating on his wife and having another son, which ended up being named Gary as well within eight months. You had a George <laughs> Foreman moment? I had a you, Foreman moment, <laughs> man. You, you named all his kids George? Yeah. So does Gary Payton the second and a Gary Payton Jr. Junior. Right. Okay. All right. So they're they're like, uh, what are they, like five months apart? They're five oh, months apart. They're I didn't know five that part. Okay. Yeah, they're five months apart. So it's, it's like, you know, when I was dating my, uh, Gary the Second's mom, who I met in high school. And then when I got the NBA, I had a relationship with another lady. Uh -huh. So, so happened they both had the, the kids in the same year. So it was like they both wanted to name him Gary. So I said, okay, cook, you could name one Gary Jr. and one Gary the Second. So it was one of them things where it worked out for me. I'm, I'm happy for that. I got two sons named after me. We can keep my we can keep our, my name going on. So that's all I was talking about. You know, just keep my name going on. And just so happy, one of my one of my oldest son, Gary Jr., just had a baby. So we we named him Gavin. So we still keep the GP okay. GP two. You know, GP yeah. two. So it's it's good though, man. You know, I, it was one of the moments that I had during my time. You know, everybody goes through that when you get into pros, and it it worked out for the best for me. So there's Gary Jr. and Gary the Third, who plays in the NBA. But yeah, you, you see this sometimes. I think yeah. Easy E had two sons named Eric. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with uh, different mothers. Um, so yeah, I remember you said you said something. You said um, it's hard to fall down, and I I kind of feel like everything is too late. When you don't have others looking out for you, everyone's taking something for themselves. Man, they were stealing, just stealing, stealing. I want to pass this on to my kids. I think you're talking about the house. Where well, they won't have to worry about the same thing. I used to be foolish, but I ain't foolish no more. All right. Did you feel like after the dust settled, any sort of bitterness or anger over the situation? No. Over everyone stealing from you like that? Well, you know, the thing is, is that these are things that people do. And just sometimes you catch them, sometimes you don't. But the most important thing is that, you know, for you to tell your kids never be that way. You don't want to do that. Because you, you, you know what kind of pain they bring you. And, and, and you know, and, Eventually, a uh, person get hurt who who's stealing stuff from somebody, and all of a sudden you're gonna be in, in, in a difficult situation. Yeah. Then you're gonna be coming, trying to come back to the person who they know got money, and you know, so if you the only one got money. Then, then you you got to say you know you got to be able to be able to look at a person's face and to look at you know. I I guess you didn't learn when you when you did me that way. Yeah, man, stealing is hard. You know, I've gotten stolen from as well, you know. Um, you know, I, I remember for me, one of the big things was I was so stupid in my 20s, I decided to buy a kilo of cocaine with somebody <laughs> they, for 17000 And they just stole that money. Mm. And for years, I was really mad about that. And then I interviewed Freeway Ricky Ross, who was a big drug dealer in America at one point. And he said, well, you know, if he didn't steal from you, you'd probably go to prison. At one point, I had the bright idea to, to buy a kilo of cocaine with a, with a friend of mine, and he ripped me off uh, right off the bat and for, for $17,000, actually. And 
for it must the, have been the late 80s. This was 98. He actually brought the kilo over to my house and claimed that there was, you know, it wasn't pure or whatever. And then at that point, I just never saw my money again. And, and for the longest time, I was, I was bitter about this. And it wasn't until that interview with you when you said, had he not ripped me off, I would probably have gone to prison. And it just, it just put the whole thing in such a perspective for me that- He did you a favor. He actually did me a favor. Hmm. That $17,000 kept me out of prison, which is a price that I think most people would pay. I would have paid it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was such a, I mean, such an epiphany when you said it that I really think about that all the time. The light just went off in my head. Like, I didn't even think about it that way. And now 17,000 is, is nothing to me. <laughs> now, if I would have went and kept doing it or if I would have killed him in retaliation or something, yeah. I wouldn't be here right now. You're right. You know, so sometimes you have to look at it in perspective and say, Yes, this is bad, but it, it could have been worse. Well, that, you know, see, I already, I already understood that because even as people say, man, you you just too laid back, you're too cool. I said, look, I said, look, I said, I know the things that I do that are right. I said, at least I'm not going to let nobody get me to do something wrong. Because cause, cause that, that was my mom. My mom used to tell me all the time. She said, look, you got to understand now. People trying to get you out of your things that you do well. Yeah, which is boxing. Yeah, you know, not, but she, you no, know, you know, I can I can control my emotion. I, you yeah. know, my whole thing is that, you know, I could be upset with you, and and not even act like I'm I'm upset with you, but I know I'm upset with you. But you know, but the point of it, it ain't gonna benefit me to let you know that I'm upset with you. Yeah, and all this and stuff. And, and so, and then, so my mom, my mom used. To, my mama told me all these things that she didn't do. <laughs> she right. says, son, I'm trying to tell you, but it'll help you. It'll save you a lot of problems. Well, at the age of 48 in 2010, uh, you fought Botha, mm -hmm. uh, which you won. You got the WBF heavyweight title at age 48, almost 50. Extremely impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 2011, you fought Sherman the Tank Williams. Uh, your eye got cut, and then it was ruled a no contest, right. ultimately. You fought Nielsen that same year, knocked him out in the third, um, until the referee uh, basically stopped it in round 10. Mm -hmm. In 2012, at age 50, you wanted to fight the one of the Klitschko brothers. No, well, you know, I, I, yeah, I wanted, yeah. I, want, I went and talked to him. Uh huh. Got and it. And so, but ultimately, it didn't happen. No, it it didn't happen because you yeah. know he he would he would, you know he told me say he he understood say look hey look y'all y'all really don't want you really want to get in there with Evander because you know Evander looked different. He looked different. He said got quick hands and stuff like y'all got the perfect style for it. Mm -hmm. And so so. They said they ain't want to do it, so you know, that's when that's when that's when I seen the Ali thing, and the Ali was saying, "I'm the only I'm the only three time heavyweight champion of the world," and he just said, "You know, why ain't just get out?" And so when I seen that that thing, I said, "Oh, okay, right," because in 2014 you officially retired. Yeah, you know, I'm the whole thing, the whole like the whole thing with the Glisco, they were they were very good fighters. Yeah, and 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 I and when, when then we, you know, I said, wow, I wouldn't, I never would have wanted to quit if I was lost. If, if, the, if the Glisco would have got me, I would still be trying to fight. <laughs> so. Only reason I was just able to move on because it's a win. Yeah. Because I, I knew I couldn't quit on a lot like that. So it, it really saved me. Yeah. Because then you finally retired after not fighting for three years. 
with a final record of 44 wins, 29 by knockout, 10 losses, and two draws. Mm-hmm. How did it feel at the end of the day to retire and really, you know, I mean, you did have some stuff afterwards, but really that was your official retirement. Well, you know, th- the thing was, it was great. I, um, you know, four time me, which have only the person ever been four time, mm-hmm. just like so is it four time or five time? Uh, it's four. But why do some people say five? Because they they heard uh, what is his name uh, the guy uh, the guy the the Nancy, uh, what, Buffer not Michael Buffer yeah Michael Buffer yeah. Michael Buffer told everybody, say, Evander Holyfield is the only five time because he counted he counted the thing when I beat the giant. Mm. The, the giant. He said, he said, he this man won every round. How could how could oh, they even I, I see what you're saying? So, okay. so, but officially so, it's four times. You know, it, it, okay. it, yeah. You know, really it's just four times. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and me being the only four-time ever champion in the world, I remember, I remember Ali was the first three, and I, I knew uh, the, the what is the other guy? He two time the first two time, um, uh, um, uh, uh, whatever his name. I can't, I can't even think of his name. Can't think of his name. But, but, but anyway, you know, I just know being the four-time heavyweight champion of the world, when, when. I was sitting here trying to fight the Clisco, one of them, like this. And but then when the, when I got on that plane, and and I heard Ali talk about, God dog, I'm I'm three time midway champ in the world. Why I just let somebody else break it? Why why I'm trying to get the four time? And I and I I said get a shoot. Why I got to get the five time? I said just shoot. I'm I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. You know, and just and realize that you know, hey, you know, records are meant to be broken. I said, whenever they, whenever it is, I said, you know, I, I said, I wanted the guy with first and something just like everybody else. But as long as you live, somebody else is gonna get stronger. Yep. And you know, Mike Tyson ended up fighting uh, Roy Jones Jr. Mm-hmm. I feel like he went easy on him. What do you think? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just, because the, the whole the whole big thing the whole big thing in exhibition is that you know you want to fight somebody that y'all in agreement that you know yeah, you're not trying just, to kill we, him. We just gonna play around. Yeah, which is what he did. I, yeah. I felt he could have knocked him out. Yeah. at certain points, but he he let him go. And there was supposed to be a fight with you and Tyson, and there was like serious talks at one point, but ultimately it fell through. So what happened with that? Because the, 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 the fact of the matter, it, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad that we both gonna make a lot of money because mm-hmm. we won't do this thing around it around COVID time. And we both gonna make a lot of money, and 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 it just some people, some people on his side wasn't it wasn't in agreement. And say and and so but what Tyson had said, what Tyson had said was the truth. Cause Tyson told me, he said, you look, what, 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 what Tyson told me, he said, look, let's do a fit to fit the deal. Huh. Okay. I so, so what is the fit to fit the deal? Both of us make the same much money. So we had somebody yeah, that's sit, a, that's that's set good. it up yeah. where it could be the same much money, but the deal didn't go through. Mm. How much was it supposed to be? You know, I, we we both are going we both are going to probably get thirty million a piece. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I'm like exhibition. Exhibition. <laughs> like, thirty million. Like, okay. But, but so on on their side on their side they didn't. Uh, it never. We feel that it never got to Tyson, you hmm. know. You know, okay. and we couldn't get it to him. We had somebody trying to get it to him, and, and couldn't get it to him. And so that's it, you know. Too bad. That's a nice paycheck right there. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about <laughs> exhibition for an exhibition. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, I'm talking, this is when the, the COVID thing, like this, and, you know, wow. And cause, and they needed something. Mm-hmm. And and so it it didn't happen. So um, so you we didn't know how to we we couldn't get it to him, but so just let go. But then again, you know, you know, it, it's not like we can't do an exhibition now. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. <laughs> you know. Vander Holyfield, uh, talking about this journey was just mind blowing. Uh, you're somebody that never ducked anybody. You fought everyone. You went after all the top contenders. You have an incredible record. Uh, you beat Mike Tyson twice, which is something that, you know, everyone was, was completely shocked and really solidified you as the incredible athlete that you are. But Tyson wasn't the only one. Like you fought all the biggest guys, all the toughest guys. You never quit. Um, you moved up in weight. And you have just an incredible career. Trying to go through this and all the fights was just like, my God, like I didn't know, <laughs> you know, until I did the research, I didn't realize how many fights you have because you have so many legendary fights that they sort of eclipse all the other ones in between. But I mean, when you talk about the greatest athletes of this era, you have to mention Evander Holyfield. You have to mention you because you have absolutely earned your place in that. And to culminate that, you actually got a statue built of you in your hometown of Atlanta. How does it feel to walk around Atlanta and see a statue of yourself? I, after me, I, I, was, I was really honored when they even told me about it. I said, man, and the man called me and said, you know, we want to do it this way. And, I, you know, I, I was happy about it. And, because it, and, and what made that special that it wasn't nothing, just what somebody thought of me. I am mean, see, it, it's different when when you, you fight for it and you say, I did this. But, you know, when somebody just choose to honor you, it's a, it's a special piece. Right. So, so I look at that and say, you know what? They ain't have to. But they chose to do it because they wanted to. They they, they telling me what they think of me. Like that. So it's yeah. great. And you got into the Boxing Hall of Fame that same year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which was a no-brainer. <laughs> Nobody well, was know, shocked that that happened. <laughs> I, you know, I, you know the, the thing is, is that you know, after in 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 the sports in the sports game, you know, you know, because I, I I remember when when I go, went up there, it was Marvin Hagler and all the you know, so you know, so I was I was I was happy to see people that wow. Oh, they they put Marvin Hagler in here too, <laughs> with me. Yeah, so, you know, I, you know. So I, you know, I, I'm like because Marvin Hagler was one of the, one of the one of the fighters that I admired a lot because it's a different type of fighters that I like. I like fighters that who didn't embarrass nobody to win. You know. Yeah. If I beat you, I beat you. But I, I'm not going to showboat and 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 you know bring on these things. You know, you, you know, that just my whole thing is that in in a game of boxing, you know, you have to have courage to get up there. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you got to hide your emotion and all this. But when the fighters over shake hands and all that, you win or lose. You you got you got you got you got to have the respect and and not you know not try to make it look like it got to be another fight after you mad and you cussing somebody out or you know I you know it, it, it's 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 bigger than that and you know and it, it it's fighters that it's fighter that is, has been good for the game but regardless of how much talent you got. It's it's just how you when it's over to, you know, 
you beat me like 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 I tell the people I said you know, I I was telling people I said my first loss was against a white boy. I said, I said <laughs> he beat me twice. I said, I, said, I said I said he beat me twice. I said now I said now I said I wouldn't have been mad. I said because I said I said I beat white boys too. I said I beat him <laughs> right. and all this. I said but somehow. I said, it was just my brother telling me. She said, you know, my brother told me the reason why I could be the white boy because they can't fight. Mm. And I, like this, and I said, they, I'm the first one to realize that some of them can. Yep. <laughs> like this, so when he, when he beat me like this, and then he beat me the second time, man, I was hoping that I'd never see that white guy again. Mm -hmm. But I beat him when I was 13. There you go. I beat him when I was 13. Then, then the next time I see him was in 19, 1990. Mm. They didn't say no, didn't say no more after that. Thirteen, I I come home and I open the door and I see this white boy, and I go, God, hey hey, what's your name? <laughs> I said. Man, stand up. I said, man, you ain't grown. <laughs> still the same height. I, I, I said, how did they find you? He said, I still live in Rockdale County, man. Uh. He said, every time you talk, every time you talk about me, everybody know exactly who I am. <laughs> he said, I became famous because you keep uh, saying. <laughs> well, he, he's about to become a lot more famous now because Black yeah, TV is a big platform. Let me yeah, tell you. I'm telling, I'm telling, you know, I'm telling, and you know, I'm telling, you know. And I, you know, I said, I said, and I said, and I said, that's it. He said, every time you go, you tell everybody, cease the calling. <laughs> but they said, everybody, he said, now I'm the biggest name in the county. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it. Say, say, well, Holyfield put him on the map, dude. Yeah, literally. So I said, I said, well, I said, I said, I said, just, I said, just the whole big thing, uh, uh, you know. I said, you know, just personal things that, you know, you know, I said, I can, my brother is kind of show you how foolish you are by talking about who can fight and who can't fight, who can jump and who can't jump. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that, that you know, find that, yeah, you, maybe the white boy that you think can't fight don't mean that the rest of them can't fight. But I always knew that, you know, when I, you know, because I got in boxing when, it, when I was real young and, and, and everybody that was boxing used to be white. So I knew that even when my brother told me, I, you know, I realized some of them could because I'm in there and I see them guys and they do they and they and they do it real well. And but, you know, and but 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 every time I used to hit them guys one shot, bam, mm -hmm. they said, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> when I hit them, they say, "Oh God!" Like this, and that just I thought that that would end. when you hit him. I said, "I remember I hit Cecil Collin with that shot." I said, "Hit me right back, like this." And I remember coming back to the corner, and because that's my first time ever going one round. And my coach said, "He said what happened." I said, he hit me back. He said, welcome to boxing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evander Holyfield, I mean, this is our first time ever meeting and our first time ever talking. And um, I feel that two words uh, describe you, and that is class act. Well, thank you. you uh, you're a true sportsman. Uh, you've answered every question I threw at you in a classy way. Uh, you don't hold any bitterness, even from people who stole from you. Or who cheated you, and um, and I think that's why you you're so happy at this point in your life. I, I, I you seem genuinely happy. I, I, I am. Yeah, and you know, I, I I interview thousands of people, and I could honestly say that you seem genuinely happy. You seem comfortable in all your decisions, and you you take responsibility for all your triumphs and for all your mistakes. And uh, you know, your story is not done yet. You have many years ahead of you, and I'm really looking forward to what you have you know, in the near future. Well, I appreciate the conversation. Okay. Peace.